It is a nice fall day for some SEC football as Kentucky at 6-2 and two, taking on Ole Miss at 3-5. And, and boy, last weekend both these teams experienced all that the SEC has to offer in football, the agony and the ecstasy. Now seven seconds to play in this one. This will be from 34 yards out. And it's good. Arkansas will win this. What a comeback. Have to take a few shots here. 40 seconds left. Johnson takes it himself. Looking for a first down and a touchdown. Kentucky's back in front. And Kentucky survives. Dave Neal back alongside my partner, Matt Stinchcomb, the former All-American at the University of Georgia. Don Davenport will join us in just a moment. And I tell you what, what a weekend it was and disappointment for Ole Miss. I think Coach Matt Luke summed it up. He said it was a real gut punch in that loss to Arkansas last weekend. How do these guys get over that? Well, they've developed a callus by now, I would think, at Ole Miss because there's been nothing but adversity throughout this season. But more than anything else, internally, they have to convince themselves we lost this football game. We gave it away. The three turnovers really hurt Ole Miss, obviously cost them the ultimate victory in this game. They have to convince themselves we're a better football team than the way we played a week ago. The season starts this week versus Kentucky. Well, as painful as that was for Ole Miss last weekend, there was certainly some excitement right here in Lexington. It was a game in which, uh, you know, Kentucky had a chance to lose it, but they found a way to win it. They're 6-2. and two. Hey, they're still in this SEC East race here in November. How legit are they at 6-2? and two? Well, this is a team that's just good enough to find ways to win, and the coaches recognize this as well. They say that, look, we have to go out. We have to play well if we expect to be victorious in the matchups that we face. And when you look at their margin of victory throughout this season and the record that they've accumulated, the statistics bear that out. But this is a team that clearly believes in itself. They don't win pretty, but they win. Well, for Kentucky, it was a big night, obviously, knocking off Tennessee last weekend. And this guy, Steven Johnson, gutted out of performance. He got hurt on this play, left the game, came back in, would obviously score that winning touchdown. It has been a tough physical couple of weeks for him. For more on his story and how much he'll go today, let's go down to Don Davenport. Well, Dave, Steven Johnson spent at least twice a day, every day in the training room this week, getting treatment on that bruised shoulder, a big reason he's going to play today. I talked to him a few minutes ago. He said shoulder feels good, but they have added some extra padding under his shoulder pads. These will go on both sides to help absorb some of those hits that he's been taking. Coaches told us that Steven's one of the toughest kids they've been around, so they're not going to change or limit what they do offensively today. Guys, coach said Steven wouldn't even let them if they try to limit him. Thanks, Dawn. And reading all the articles this week, talking to guys yesterday in our meetings, the respect they have for him and the way he came out and handled that tough situation last week certainly uh, bodes well for this team moving forward. Kentucky wins the toss. They defer. Ole Miss will get the football. Austin McGinnis will kick it away to Jalen Jones, who is back to return. Jalen. Had a 97-yard kickoff return in the opener against South Alabama. He leads the SEC in total return yards. Matter of fact, Ole Miss leads the SEC overall in kickoff return yardage, and this one will be taken about three or four yards deep and on a knee. And at quarterback for the second consecutive week, Jordan Ta'amu, the junior college transfer, looked very impressive last week. He couldn't have started out any better than he did last week versus Arkansas. Explosive plays. Didn't feel as if the stage was too big for him. This offensive system has afforded to Amu plenty of reps. They split reps even when Shea Patterson was still healthy. And to Amu, in his first career start versus Arkansas, played very well. Needs to protect the football. That's obvious. But you can see the yardage that was generated and the threat that Tamu is as a runner. That's an element that the Kentucky defense is going to have to keep a very close eye on, especially in third down, obvious passing situations. Ole Miss, of course, got up to a great start last week. Second play from scrimmage, 64-yard touchdown run from their senior tailback, Jordan Wilkins. So here we go from the 25-yard line. Little play fake to Wilkins, and they'll Get it to the outside. That pass is caught. DK Metcalf only a yard or two. And that'll be an interesting matchup today, Stinch. The, these wide receivers from Ole Miss, certainly great size against the great size on the outside of Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, you know, you think Kentucky, you think Kentucky basketball. This looks almost like a front court. <laughs> a couple of guys going after rebounds. 
They'll end up giving him three on that last play, so second and seven. This one is dropped to Marcus Lodge. Take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Ace. And certainly the receivers will be a big part of this one. But you got it. Use Jordan Wilkins to make those guys effective. You know, that's the balance that really Ole Miss lacked early on in the season when Wilkins went north of 100 yards rushing versus Alabama. Matt Luke and offensive coordinator Phil Longo said, we have to make sure we get our ground game going, and Wilkins is a dangerous runner with excellent vision. Third down. Damu. He'll be dropped back around the 21-yard line. The 20th sack of the year. That one is by Denzel Ware, who just picked up sack number four and a half. It's a twist game on the left side of the Ole Miss offensive front, and Denzel Ware just keeps working across the face of left guard Javon Patterson. And this is something that Kentucky's going to have to be able to do. Because when you get in obvious passing downs, Kentucky wants to play zone. They have to affect the passer with four. End over end kick from Will Gleason. Take a roll inside the 35 yard line, and that is where Kentucky will have it after a 43 yard punt. And here comes Steven Johnson, and boy, he has been a calming force for this offense. Well, he's been calming, no question, and it's an offense that's been somewhat dampened this year. Not as explosive, but they've been clutch. And Steven Johnson, we've already mentioned his toughness. He finds ways to make those plays in the big moments, even returning after injury. What's one of the first things he does? He pulls on a zone read and takes off running with that bad shoulder. That toughness has seeded and earned respect of his teammates. Had more rushing yards than passing yards last week against the Volunteers. And here he goes on the first play, and he'll slide down at around the 43-yard line, give him eight. Take a look at this Kentucky offense. And of course, this is an offense that uh, Benny Snell will be highlighted quite a bit today. Benny Snell is probably going to be the drum beat, but C.J. Conrad at his tight end position is a point that has to be more emphasized offensively. Eddie Grant said they want to get 87 going. And off here, Snell coming near side, first down. They'll spot it at the 34-yard line. C.J. Hampton runs out of bounds, 22 yards on the game. This is a play Kentucky runs very well. It's the counter, C.J. Conrad pulling around, as is the right guard, and do a great job of leading Benny Snell to the edge of the line of scrimmage. And Snell does an excellent job of bouncing his runs. There's nowhere to go inside, bounce, and show that speed to the perimeter. What great block by Bunchy Stallings to seal the inside and give Benny Snell yet another big run. Benny now closing in on 800 yards this year. Of course, last year set a freshman rushing record for Kentucky running backs. And there you go, C.J. Conrad. First catch in four-plus games for the tight end. That's a gain of eight as you look at this Ole Miss defense. And they got some guys that can get after you on the outside, but they're going to need some good linebacking play. And Demarcus Gates has been kind of that centerpiece defensively for Ole Miss all season long, very consistent. Last week, a career-high 15 tackles. Incredibly active. They'll line him up at the end of the line of scrimmage, but he also patrols the box from tackle to tackle. Johnson keeps it, and he is hit, falls on the healthy shoulder, picks up two, and there is Gates to pick up the stop for Ole Miss. That's the danger of this zone read. When you see it a lot, we've already seen a counter play. We've seen a boot off of the counter play, moving the pocket early for Steven Johnson. But Eddie Grant, offensive coordinator, Kentucky said, I'm not going to change anything. We're not going to call this game any differently than we otherwise would. He trusts his quarterback, and he trusts his toughness. Bowden in motion, and here is Lynn, the true freshman. We'll get it just inside the 20. It's time for us to take a look at today's keys to the game. Well, you know, it seems as if Kentucky would likely be able to run the football well versus an Ole Miss defense that has to key on stopping that one element. So because of that, Kentucky offensively, they're going to need to hit an early shot. Make this defense respect you a little bit right now, early on in the opening possession, marching this football right into the red zone, an opportunity maybe to take a shot here on a second and manageable in the red zone fringe. Bowden in that wildcat formation, he threw, completed a pass last week. This time he'll keep it. 
And he is wrapped up around the 20 yard line. That'll be a loss of a yard. Gates getting in there to make the play. And Bowden, a guy that we've mentioned uh, coming out of high school, a highly touted recruit, played quarterback, a guy that can make plays not only as a receiver, he's ran the football, but also, of course, able to unleash a pass a time or two. And based on how Ole Miss will play the Kentucky offense, because Bowden will line up in the Wildcat spot. And that will determine whether or not we'll see a pass coming from number one today. It's a third down and seven. Ole Miss pinching in the corners. Pass is complete around the 15 yard. That's the incomplete. Bobbled and then dropped. They're going to call. Are they going to say completion? They are. Our umpire said like it was incomplete, but they're going to give him the reception. Well, at a program that's had some storied receivers, Garrett Johnson's one of the best. I mean, it seems as if he's been here at Kentucky for about seven years. Not only did he bobble that one, but he's a guy that will catch it by any means necessary. He used his knees on that catch. They're going to take another look at this. Our umpire was standing right on top of that play, and he ruled incomplete. I guess you got some help from side judge who said was complete. Look at our umpire right here. If he can stay in the shot, now he gets out of there. But I'll tell you what, I think a, it's that's a, a catch. catch. Absolutely a catch. I, you know, I can't blame the umpire for thinking this is out because clearly it's not in his hands. But that's because the ball's between his knees. <laughs> You're gonna have it both places, right? And you see Garrett Johnson here takes a shot, contested throw. You know you're gonna have. You're probably gonna take a lick right there. And Johnson does a great job, excellent. I would say concentration, but really just fortuitous that that left knee stayed underneath <laughs> that football because it's floating around for a moment there, but never touched the ground. I don't think that'll be a, a catch. It'll still be fourth down coming up, but fourth down in about two and a half, maybe three. Well, this is something that Kentucky doesn't do a lot of. Take that opening possession and going right down and scoring in the first half. They've only done it one other time this year. Get points up on the board early in this one. Well, that at this point, maybe they're trying to freeze Austin McGinnis, the officials. School record holder for career points with 318. After further review, the ruling of a catch is confirmed. However, the spot was at the 18-yard line. It's still fourth down. All right, so they'll push him back from where the line was a couple of yards. So now you're looking at fourth down at about five. And here comes Austin McGinnis, who is 13 of 18 this year, and he is a perfect 8 of 8 inside of 40 yards. This is from 36. He has hit 63 of 81 field goals in his career. And that one is about as perfect as you can get it. Right down the middle for McGinnis, and Kentucky opens up the scoring. They lead Ole Miss 3 to nothing here in the first quarter. 9.45 to play. He's only done this 64 successful times in his career. I think he knows how to do it. <laughs> I think he's figured it out. Well, the Cats get a 36-yard field goal from Austin McGinnis to take a 3-0 lead early on in this matchup between two long-time SEC foes. They haven't played since 2011, however. They're getting back together here in Lexington on this Saturday in November. So Austin McGinnis will kick it away, this Kentucky team has played so many close ball games this year and having some success winning them. Not wasn't necessarily the case the first couple of years, but they seem to have the uh, that something that it factor here in 2017. Now Ole Miss in their second possession, Jordan Ta'amu. What does he like to do? Well, he's a guy that's always a threat to take off. So you see a box here. Only five defenders, and there's an opportunity to block those two inside linebackers 
You work up on the rub, your lead back becomes a blocker, and your quarterback is a running back. And Tom who's a guy that can take it the distance and off of a counter action, it influences linebackers to sink hard inside. Tom who does a good job reading the edge, pulling it and making you pay on the perimeter. He is a lethal weapon with that ball in his hands as a runner. He will fake it and throw over the middle. This pass is caught by the tight end Dawson Knox out of Nashville, Tennessee. The walk on tight end picks up 26 and they have found themselves a pretty good weapon. Well, Dawson Knox is a guy they say might have the best hands of all the receivers. And this is a talented wide receiving core, a big target at tight end. Damu comes near side. This pass is caught by Lodge, but he is hit immediately on the back end by Lonnie Johnson, who, by the way, we need to mention this. Getting the start today, it's his first start, the junior college transfer, and he's getting it over Chris Westry, the 6'4 junior, who had started 21 straight and 33 games overall in his career. Yeah, Mark Stoops was, you know, kind of indifferent about the whole streak being snapped by Chris Westry. Said Lonnie Johnson's earned the start. Here's Wilkins inside the 45. We'll pick up six. There's Jordan Wilkins, we mentioned him earlier. How important he's going to be to Ole Miss offensively. It keeps your defense honest when you can attack the tackle box with your running game. That means you may have to borrow from your secondary to shore up your run defense if the Rebels are able to have success on the ground. Third down. Pass is caught. That'll be real close to the first down. He might be just a tad short. That's four or five yards to Dawson Knox. He will spot it at the 39 and a half. He needs to get it inside the 39. We saw on an earlier third down where Kentucky was able to get home, ran a line stunt. They're not going to blitz much. Matt Luke, a former offensive line coach, they do a good job in their protection schemes. The ball comes out quickly. Wasn't quite enough on that reception. Spot short of the line to gain. There's no further review. And they're going to take a look at this spot. I'll be honest with you, Dave. When he caught it, I was a little bit surprised that the spot was as shy as it was. It looked to me like once Knox caught it, was able to advance the ball enough to where he would have picked up the first. Well, Matt Luke was going to go for it regardless. See, the ball comes out quickly. So where that oh, yeah, ball that looks... is, it's clearly inside the 30, 39 yard line. Where's, see where his knee hits, and the ball is in his right. It'd be right at the 39, mm -hmm. I would think, right? You know, where the ball is as his knee hit, but to me, it, did, it looks like it would be further upfield than where it's currently spot, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, you know, to me, if I were to look at it the way you mentioned it, I think it's at least at the 39 yeah. yard line. After further review, the ruling is the runner made the line to gain at the 39 yard line. It's a first down. Good review by our guys. That'll give Ole Miss a fresh set of downs. Important, and they got it right. But as you mentioned, you know, Matt Luke, he was already loaded up, ready yes. to go for it on fourth down and plus territory. Well, this is an offense that can be explosive. One of the other things that they do a lot of those is 10 yard gains. Not a lot of offenses would category that as an explosive play, but only Alabama has more of them. So you look at a team right here in Ole Miss where they can turn a play, run or pass, and it's a first down's worth of yardage. That means they're able to sustain drives. So Ole Miss team racked up 566 yards of offense versus Arkansas, but only 51 in the fourth quarter. Turnovers doomed them. Stopping drives when they needed them most. Five of their seven scoring drives against Arkansas were less than two minutes. The Hawks had the ball for over 40 minutes in that contest last Saturday. So first down and 10. Damu, he'll keep it, and that didn't go well. Jordan Jones, boy, what an athlete they have in that young man, the junior out of Youngstown, Ohio. Jordan Jones is so explosive as a player. They missed four games from him with a shoulder injury. Led the conference in tackles a year ago. And he's such an athlete in space. You see him coming down on the gap exchange, did a great job. 
Boy, Kentucky might have gotten a break there. They looked like they were not lined up. They substituted late. Lodge couldn't catch up to the pass. Lonnie Johnson on that coverage. There's something that defensive coordinator Matt House had some concern about are the vertical shots that Ole Miss will take. A lot of their routes send their receivers deep downfield. They're going to challenge your secondary. And here on a third and long, you know, Kentucky showing pressure. They don't bring pressure very much in these third down scenarios. They'll bring a couple extra. Pass is caught to A.J. Brown. And he'll be stopped around the 34 yard line shy of the first down. He'll get seven. Josh Allen will get credit for the tackle for Kentucky. Almost got home. Affect the passer. Did bring pressure that time, as you mentioned, Dave. And A.J. Brown has been taken away a lot by defenses. And you see Ole Miss, this riverboat gambler time. And once again, they're saying, look, we're kind of in no man's land. Right. Let's go for it. Fourth down, and let's call it five. Ole Miss three out of eight on fourth down attempts this year. Damu, he keeps it first down around the 25 yard line. Denzel Ware tripped him up, but a gain of nine. This is no scramble. This is designed quarterback draw. You see him possess that football for a second. Let Wilkins pick up the edge pressure and then pierce the defense right upfield. You know, we talked to Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator. And you see. That's where Denzel Ware, a little bit shaken up after that one. But Phil Longo talked about how Tamu, the distinction between the two quarterbacks is he's more decisive in the, in the run game. He's not going to look to scramble around or extend plays in the QB draw. We said, what's the difference in your offense? And the, one of the first things that the Ole Miss coaching staff mentions is QB draw game. It's to tag on to that point is there's the, they run the RPOs with both guys there's just the the R part isn't really there with Shea Patterson uh, Shea Patterson we'll come back have more in a moment welcome back to Lexington Kentucky the Wildcats leading at 3-0 right now in the fourth first quarter Denzel Ware went down on that last play for Kentucky he's over here on the sideline getting ice rolled over his left calf but he looks like he is good to go guys Thanks, Don. That means Josh Pascal, their youngster, who they're really high on, the true freshman. They nicknamed him the Blitz Baby. Did Ware and his partner, Allen. The Blitz Baby. That's hysterical to me. <laughs> Blitz Brothers, and then you got the Blitz Baby. That's a pretty good looking baby right there. Good yeah. size, anyway. That's birth weight, number four. So the Ta'amu first down run on fourth down sets up Ole Miss, first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Play clock, by the way, was malfunctioning, so they're keeping it down on the field. Here's Ta'amu, clean pocket, near side. That pass is caught, that one by Lodge, and he is pushed out of bounds around the eight-yard line. That's a pickup of 12 and another first down. They continue to try DeMarcus Lodge's side of the formation, and this is a portion of the field where when you look at score percentage, Ole Miss doesn't do that bad of a job, but you gotta get touchdowns. And 51% of your possessions in this red area, you have to come away with six more frequently than that. Tenth play of the drive. They'll swing it out to A.J. Brown. Turns the corner, dives for the end zone. They will say, will discuss it and say touchdown. Mike Edwards for Kentucky is going to be matched up on A.J. Brown quite a bit today. And if you get a missed tackle versus these receivers, they got an excellent job. They do an excellent job, rather, of running after the catch. A.J. Brown showing that extension right there at the pylon. Well, the ball obviously hit the pile on touchdown there. Did he stay in bounds is the question. We didn't have any look that would show us otherwise. Well, we wonder if that right toe, I guess. It looked to me like that right toe was up. Replay agrees. So Gary Wonderlich 
with the point after and some pushing and shoving and a flag comes in. Well, Jordan Jones was a bit tangled up there at the end of the point after. He was mixing it up. Looked like Derek Beatty came in there and cleaned him out of there. You see offensive coordinator Phil right, Longo conduct. coaching him up. Number 87, Ole Miss, 34, Kentucky. That was their first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Those fouls offset. The try is good. Timeout. Regardless of those personal fouls, A.J. Brown from eight yards out gives the Rebels the lead. Seven to three here in Lexington. Back in a moment. Dory Nokane Studio, Georgia's first game as the number one team by the committee. South Carolina, though, Brian Edwards, 12-yard catch for the touchdown, 10-place, 75-yard drive. Guys, it's 7-7 early. Those rankings are rat poison, Dari. That was a nice drive by South Carolina. 10 plays, 75 yeah. yards versus that defense. Oh, that poison. <laughs> teams better find some antidotes. Oh, big hit on Lynn Bowden. Didn't get to the 20-yard line. Well, coming up at 7.30 Eastern, it's our SEC Saturday night game. Southern Miss having a pretty solid year, squaring off against Tennessee. I think we all know the storyline there. It's all coming up right here on the SEC Network. Catch that streaming live on the ESPN app. Tennessee lost four straight games for the first time since Butch Jones' first year back in 2013. And tough out tonight at home against Southern Miss. Yeah, the program that's reeling, got a fan base that's saying don't show up to the game. Yeah, Empty kneeling, that is a boneheaded concept if I've ever heard one. Uh, good drive, though, by Ole Miss. Ten plays, 75 yards to answer the field goal from Kentucky. Now the Cats with their second opportunity offensively. Swing it out for the tight end. That'll be Greg Hart. He'll pick up just a couple of yards. Well, Greg Hart's a guy they haven't even seen or used a lot as a receiver, but some of these big personnel groupings. So when Hart is in there, Conrad is in there, Something that Ole Miss will have to adjust to from a formation standpoint. And you see them rolling defenders into the box because of it. Yeah, two tight ends in this set on second down. He'll hand it off. Benny Snell driving the pile out to the 25 and finally getting stopped around the 26-yard line. Five-yard pickup the hard way. Talk about Snell bouncing runs, showing some speed when he does get out into space. He's not going to dust anybody, but what I like more than anything else is that when he goes into a pile, that pile moves. Steven Johnson will keep it for the first down. Out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Well, didn't slide a whole bunch last week, and the coaches got on him. And this week, it's almost mandatory that he slides for that bad shoulder. Uh, you definitely want to keep number 15 healthy. We mentioned, you know, are the numbers, do they really pop off the sheet? Not necessarily, but this offense, it's far more effective when number 15 is in there. And because of that element right there, picks up the first down off the pole game. King and Snell in the backfield, along with Steven Johnson on first down and 10. They will swing it out to King. He has pushed out of bounds at the 38, six yard pickup. Well, that's easy pitch and catch right there. That's a long handoff to Sahim King, a guy that Eddie Grand said, look, we got to get more touches to this guy. He got a quick toss last week, fumbled right away. They went back to him, though, gave him some more carries. He is an explosive kind of counterpunch to what Benny Snell is, and they're both in the backfield together. Now they'll give it to Benny Snell, and he'll pick up seven between the tackles, and that's a first down for Kentucky. This is a play that Auburn runs a good bit, and it's effectively the same as a zone read, where you can either give it to Benny Snell or you can pull it and throw it to Sahim King. Those two backs kind of cross in the offensive backfield, forces the defense to not only play the point of attack, but also address the edge if Steven Johnson pulls it and were to throw it to King. Caught up with Benny Snell yesterday. Confident young man. Confident in this offense, but they cannot stop the man who is the all-time Ole Miss sack leader, 
Haynes picks up his 32nd career sack. Now has seven and a half this year, a loss of seven. You're trying to run play action, and you're going to pull on some counter look right here. And Logan Stenberg, you got to keep going. You can't stop and set up to try to pass protect because a guy like Marquise Haynes is going to get upfield right now and edge you. It's just like that right tackle trying to take a pass set. If you're pulling on those play action pulls, you have to sell up, but you got to run as if you're going over there to block. Second down and 17. They'll give it to Benny. Hurdles a defender and gets out of bounds. Jumps right over C.J. Moore to pick up seven yards. Kid's a jock, isn't he? Yes. We were talking about him moving the pile. Nice little stiff arm. Then he's just jumping over would-be tackles. Look at that. That's a pretty good athleticism. You see a lot of guys hurdle, but not a lot of them stick the landing and stay on their feet. 180 yards rushing against Tennessee. Most ever by a Kentucky running back against the Volunteers. Watch well, see if Kentucky doesn't try to move the pocket here. Maybe boot Steven Johnson out to get away from the pass rush. Third down. Johnson passes caught. Richardson will have the first down around the 30 yard line. A 23 yard pickup. Jalen Jones back in coverage. Nice protection by the Kentucky offensive front. Ole Miss brings six. Taven Richardson showing that length and able to go on up and snag that downfield pass from Steven Johnson. 6-3 target, caught a big 36-yarder last week on the game-winning drive versus Tennessee. Steven Johnson, 5-5, five of five, 44 yards. Only three for 46 last weekend. Johnson dancing around, has some room to run. He's to the 20, to the 15, and will step out of bounds. 16 yards. Last week versus Tennessee, Kentucky ripped off two really nice runs. The same look, same motion with Benny Snell. But this time, they were looking to take a shot downfield. Great coverage by Ole Miss's secondary. And then Steven Johnson showing who we're talking about, why he's dangerous. You know, sometimes you tuck it and run it. That's not a broken play. It doesn't turn into a coverage sack. It turns into a first down and a red zone possession. Just inside the 15-yard line for Kentucky. This is their 10th play of the drive. Coming to the close of the first quarter. And some feet got tangled up. C.J. Conrad was the intended target. Looks like DeMarcus Gates and Conrad might have got uh, a little too close to each other. What? A little too close. That's what happens when you <laughs> when you clothesline a tight end on his release. Watch Gates. Oh, just he wrapped just, him up. Yeah. I, I, I don't oh, know how man. a flag doesn't come out right there. And number three, Demarcus Gates, a guy that we said needs oh. to have a big game for Ole Miss. I, I, That's a touchdown. It is a touchdown, and we've seen Kentucky. They've hit that play a couple of different times, and you could tell Gates he realized it, but he realized it late. No flag came out. Second down and 10. They'll go to Bowden. He's inside the 10 yard line, picks up four, but now you're looking at third down and six. You see Bowden's elusiveness with the ball, a quick, just long throw over there horizontally. You try, try to make one guy miss and get upfield and pick up some positive yardage. Still can pick up a first down here in the red zone. A huge no call, though, because you mentioned it, Dave. That's a walk-in touchdown for C.J. Conrad, as it is a third down, close to six, to try to convert and go back ahead in this game. And I think C.J. is well aware that he might have gotten robbed of six points on the board for the Cats. Kentucky knocking on the door, but they trail by four here at home. Fifteen minutes are in the book. Second quarter football coming up right after this. Back in Lexington, Ole Miss leading 7-3. Mark Stoops during that timeout had a chance to vent a little bit about the no call a moment ago. We will 
flip flop. Ends of the field here as Kentucky is in the red zone looking at a third down. Here's Garrett Johnson right here a big target for them on third downs. And Johnson is wrapped up and that is a loss that'll take him outside the 15. A loss of six. But here's Coach Stoops trying to get some answers on a couple of things in that first quarter. Well, you know, you got a touchdown going the other way. It looked like the receiver was out of bounds before the ball touches the pylon, and then you get your tight end tackled on what otherwise would have been a walk-in touchdown and an easy throw. And instead, you end up, you can't convert on a third down, a negative yardage play, and your place kicker's on the field again. Austin McGinnis from 34 yards out. And he knocks another one through the uprights. He's hit from 36 and 34. It is a one point game back in a moment. Dory Noke in studio showed you the South Carolina Brian Edwards touchdown. Georgia's next drive, Jake Fromm inside the red zone to the end sideline of the end zone. Javon Wims with a remarkable catch. Dogs back on top. And of course, Georgia keeping an eye on this game as well, Dory, because if Kentucky loses and Georgia wins, Georgia will clinch the SEC East in a trip to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the SEC title game. Some they haven't done since 2012. Hard to imagine. Seems likely they might face the same team potentially from that 2012 matchup. Of course, they can think about that. And wow, what a segue right into thinking out loud. Perfect. Who knew? I knew it was coming. I didn't know. I just said it like that. That's how it works. The anticipation is uncanny. <laughs> Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears, 7 o'clock Eastern time right here on the SEC Network, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Be sure to get involved. You can participate through your social media, live call-ins, and I'm sure those guys will uh, have some thoughts about the way this weekend shakes out. Yeah, you think they're fired up, Alabama LSU? can't imagine that the thoughts are coming out loud. Denzel Ware, by the way, back in the game for Kentucky at his defensive end spot. Over the middle. That pass is caught. Dawson Knox. He's out over the 35 to the 39 yard line. Mike Edwards brings him down. Team's leading tackler, but not before. Knox picks up 14. A couple of games ago, Dawson Knox missed a couple of games, hadn't been healthy the entire season, was a big weapon, kind of quieter last week, and already three targets in this game. To Amu. Nice throw. Pass is caught by Van Jefferson into Kentucky territory right around the 21 yard line. Van Jefferson, one of the leading receivers from a season ago. He's working with Derek Beatty. And Beatty, who's looking back to track that football and ended up getting pulled further in, in field. Van Jefferson caught it in stride. 40 yard pickup. To Amu over the middle, just a little too far looking for. Dawson Knox incomplete. We talked about the matchup and Kentucky might be one of the few teams in the country that can at least from a size standpoint handle the wide receivers from Ole Miss. From a size standpoint there's yeah. no question because you look at the length that Kentucky has. Well, Derek Beatty is at 6-3. He's one of the few matchups where he's actually got an inch on Van Jefferson when he's out there on an island singled up in coverage. But you can see that there's something that Matt House talked about. It's the vertical threat of the Ole Miss passing game where you will be challenged downfield. And obviously we've seen Jordan Tomu able to deliver on the downfield throws. Tomu will complete that one. It goes to D.K. Metcalf. He'll pick up five. A couple of weeks ago, Head coach Mark Stoops took exception to his defensive secondary. He's a secondary guy, a DB coach. Spends a lot of time. He said, I want to see some of these throws challenged. And they lost to Mississippi State. He said there were 10 opportunities. We were 0 for 10. And in a game like this one, where the receivers are going to catch it, an opportunity for the secondary to step up with the Wildcats. Third down. Pressure comes to Amu to the end zone. Batted up away at the last minute. Chris Westry on the coverage of DK Metcalf. Well, Chris Westry's the guy that needed to answer the call, and he did on that play. 
And this was after a pressure. Tom is taking a shot, having to stare down a blitz in his face. And look at Westry on his offhand play right through the hands of DK Metcalf. Ooh. You see Mike Edwards coming on the safety blitz. Denzel Ware getting there as well. And Tamu gets sandwiched. Maybe Mike Edwards needs to be like a blitz cousin or something. This is Denzel Ware and Edwards meeting at the quarterback. The blitz brothers. The blitz yeah, cousin. In we, the got family. The, we got the blitz baby. Yeah, you see Tamu. This is not a good look for the Rebels offensively. Oh, because they're back up as an ex tight end, Jason Pellerin. There he is right there who they who came as a quarterback, moved him out to tight end, but when the injury happened to Shea Patterson, they brought him back into the quarterback fold. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take it as well back in a moment. Jordan Tamu got shaken up on that last throw. Ultimately an incomplete pass into the end zone, but watch the pressure. Jordan Jones is gonna to come to the protecting back side and off your screen, is Mike Edwards, and he's going to come right here in the B gap, and he's going to get all the way home. Denzel Ware is going to win his one on one on the edge, and they sandwich Jordan Tamu. You see the shot that he takes. That's a high low. Those are clean, not too high, not too low. That's right in the strike zone. But Tamu got it from two different directions. Here's Gary Wunderlich. His field goal from 33 yards is good. Two excellent kickers getting it done today. Here at Kroger Field. Let's get an update down from Dawn. Hey guys, standing here watching Jordan Tom, who talked to his offensive coordinator, told him he has find the official word from Ole Miss. Got the wind knocked out of him. He's good to go. Bill Longo over there. That's the training staff handle that. And then once they give him the go ahead, it's all. Let's get back in there now. That's let's right. Figure it out. The next play, man. Right. Although you see, Pellerin's over there. Gonna make sure that he stays loose. You know, it's both of these quarterbacks demonstrating some toughness in this game in Kentucky. You know, they get down in the red zone. We've seen on a couple of occasions on third downs, one of the most infrequent blitz teams in the entire conference. 13th versus drop back pass situations. Kentucky just doesn't pressure a lot, but they have here today, and they've gotten home on a couple of different occasions. That's enough to affect a passer, especially a guy in Jordan Tamu in only his second start. Ole Miss drive, six plays, 59 yards, minute 30 off the clock. Kick will sail through the end zone. Hey, Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern, the SEC Network grants you an all-access pass to Arkansas football for their game against Coastal Carolina. It's SEC Inside. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. I understand Austin Allen able to play today. He didn't get the start, though. Went with Cole Kelly, the big fella. To Amu and Johnson. There are their numbers. Pretty good start for those guys combined. 16 out of 21. Both junior college quarterbacks. Very similar stories. Both of them really. You know, Tom has got better passing numbers, but both quarterbacks have hurt these defenses when they pull the ball and run it. That's Richardson on the game. These two quarterbacks, we talk about coming out of junior college. Uh, for Steven Johnson, he actually started it rambling before he went to junior college, and not a lot of depth. They had one quarterback here at Kentucky. A couple of guys transferred out, and they were in kind of a, we got to go find somebody immediately. And they were down to, like, the middle of November, and they didn't have a quarterback. They studied some J.C. tape and liked what they saw in Johnson, offered him. Showed up in January a few weeks later. There goes King. And a very similar story with on the other side with Tamu. Ole Miss needed some help at quarterback. They had to go the JC route where they've had some success. Tamu, of course, had a New Mexico military academy, but grew up in Hawaii. And he was kind of a late ad for them as well. Boy, they're glad they found him. Isn't it the truth? I mean, you look at Steven Johnson, it's been a year hence since he stepped in after Drew Barker's injury. And it's taken over as the starter, and obviously Tamu, only his second opportunity at quarterback for Ole Miss. Game of two. Fahim King, the junior out of Colquitt, Georgia. Like to get him anywhere seven to ten touches today. 
times. A good job by DeMarcus Gates. Jerry and Street in there on the tackle. Already five stops for Gates. And as we mentioned a week ago versus Arkansas, a career high 15 tackles. A guy that we know as long as Kentucky remains committed to the ground game, Gates is going to have to be a big piece of the defense if they're going to have success. Even Johnson will fall forward to the 42 and a half yard line. He'll pick up three, but Ito Jones will trip him up. That time I wonder if the injury crept into Steven Johnson's head just a little bit. He looked a little bit hesitant. You know, a week ago he takes off and runs. You see it. I got a chance to split the rush and get upfield quickly. Gates did a good job of collapsing from coverage, but Johnson had one more hitch. Maybe a little too hesitant on that pull. Tuck that ball and run it. Probably could have picked up another two or three yards to set up a third and short. So third down and six. Johnson flushed out of that pocket again. He'll try to run for it, and he is met and stays alive, falls forward. Flag comes in late. They will spot him real close to the line to make. I think he may have gotten it. Well, he was hesitant on the other one. This time, when he committed to the run, you could tell Johnson had a nose for the line to gain. Personal foul, targeting with the foul helmet, defense. The play is under further review. Last week versus Arkansas, right at the goal line, Cole Kelly's running towards the goal line. And there was a big collision. It looks like Braylon Speaks is the player that they're questioning whether or not he targeted with the crown of the helmet. All right, so, you know, as the rule reads, and not dissimilar to the play last week, you know, was it the crown of the helmet? It looks like it was. This is a run. And I get what this rule's intended to do. You're trying to protect, in this instance, the crown of the helmet, you're protecting the tackler. Not the guy that's getting tackled. This is where you injure your neck. It's heads up tackling. They teach it even in rec ball. That said, on a run like this, and you're talking about a guy looking to try to gain the yardage needed, and you'll see the rules as described here. Any forcible hit by the crowd. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number nine is disqualified. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. And in a similar play last week, there was no flag. Right. It wasn't targeting. They said it was a good clean hit. Was the crown of the helmet involved? It was. This is a huge blow for the Ole Miss defense because Breland's the right side. Gets his nose across the goal line. Touchdown, Kentucky. That's his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. In the big games, Benny Snell, is, he stepped up. He started off the season kind of quietly. And as the season has worn on, coming off the season high, 180 yards versus Tennessee, and he just powers his way into the end zone behind big Drake Jackson, a guy that we don't talk enough about at center. Had a red shirt freshman getting nice push at the point of attack. And the Cats in the end zone again. Nine plays, 75 yards, four and a half minutes off the clock, and the big play was the old double pass. Lynn Bowden makes a nice little catch, recovers a bobble, throws it back to his quarterback, Steven Johnson, who sets him up first and goal inside the five. Dory Noka in studio. Let's update Arkansas down 14-7 at home to Coastal Carolina, who's lost seven in a row before Cole Kelly on the little screen pass to T.J. Hammonds. Hammonds breaks it for 60, tie game in Fayetteville. Another screen pass by Arkansas. That was a big part of their win last week versus Ole Miss. Jalen Jones. He's out over the 30-yard line. Big play on that last possession for Kentucky was the old double pass. You know, we talk about hit some shots, but look right here. Here's C.J. Conrad, and here's Lynn Bowden. Now, the throw's going to be to Bowden, and it's a backwards pass from Steven Johnson. 
But look at Conrad breaking open. See him right here? So you got two options if you're Bowden. You can either come to the tight end or you can come back to the screen all the way to the opposite side of the field. The Ole Miss defense responds. Great play call by Eddie Grant who said, look, we're gonna take some shots in this game. We mentioned that being a key. That was a big part to get Kentucky on the doorstep and able to put them ahead on the scoreboard. Quick throw to the outside. Demarcus Lodge spins out of a tackle and will take it out over the 45 yard line, a pickup of 16 yards. And to Amu back in the game after he took a pretty good shot himself on Ole Miss' last offensive possession. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave, Derek Beatty's going to have to do a better job tackling an open field than that. He's lucky that Demarcus Lodge lost a little bit of his footing and he's still running. And Jefferson to midfield. Let's go down to Dawn. Well, guys, lost in all of the focus on quarterback Jordan Ta'amu's injury. That last drive is the fact that Ole Miss lost their right guard, Alex Givens. He headed into the locker room, going to be evaluated for a head injury. Oof. Boy, injuries just decimating this Ole Miss team in so many ways. And for Shea Patterson, their outstanding quarterback done for the year. Wilkins on that carry. Well, Gibbons has been replaced by Durante Bolden. You see Sean Rawlings missed a game last week versus Arkansas. Wilkins stays on his feet. Nice run from Jordan Wilkins. We'll have the first down and a lot more inside the 35-yard line. A good 11-yard run. Took contact in his own offensive backfield and kept his footing. Great balance by Wilkins and gets a little bit of help. Looked like Bolden was trying to strip the ball so he could get the yardage. Boy, how about that little shimmy from Wilkins? He's inside the 20. Wilkins kind of holding that left arm down a little bit after that shot. Was able to shake Kendall Randolph in the open field. Woo, that move. <laughs> Wide open across the middle, Van Jefferson. Touchdown, Ole Miss from 20 yards out. That did not take very long. And for Van Jefferson, his first touchdown of the year. Tempo getting to Kentucky on that one. Nice pump fake. Bought Courtney Love up underneath. Bought the safety as well with the pump. And Van Jefferson alone. And he's going to get the belt. That's what these receivers get. They make big plays. They hand them the belt over there. Call themselves the NWO for nasty wideouts. Well, Ta'amu looks like he's doing all right. He gets a little touch of the belt. <laughs> Namu, 14 of 18, buck 78, two TDs. Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report in moments. Dari, Doring, and Chiswick. Randy Shannon's Gator debut was... Not good. Not good. <laughs> I'm going to leave it to you. South Carolina, Georgia, close game at the half. What do you think first half? Finally here? cranking these offenses up here. Yeah, exciting both ways. Yep. We'll talk more about all this at the half. Thanks, guys. Six minutes and 18 seconds to go here before halftime. That kick will be fielded by Bowden at the goal line, and Lynn hit at the 20 drop there. Maybe a little confusion by Kentucky's defense on that last touchdown play. You see Ole Miss, they use the same formation. You see four receivers at the top, one of those being Wilkins. Jukes, Randolph gets upfield, nice blocking in front, and then they flip the formation opposite the hash. So now you're lined up on the right hash mark and you're tempoing. And you see all the four guys, four receivers now, four eligibles down here. And you're gonna see the confusion by the Kentucky players. And there's opportunity. The safety's way over here. Van Jefferson, once he clears Courtney Love, number 51, it's a walk into the end zone. Kentucky defense just wasn't ready and Ole Miss was able to tempo him in the red zone. A couple of tight ends for the Cats. Boy, a simple inside handoff. 
Going to Benny Snell will pick up seven. You know, you mentioned that tempo, and we talked to the coaches about tempo, and this week at practice, things change. They spend more time on, on quick pace, quick pace, quick pace. You know, in, in Kentucky, when Eddie Grant came here, and he and Darren Henshaw both, the thought was this was going to be another tempo offense, and then they flipped the switch. It became more run-oriented, and it complements the defense better. But I think because of that, your defense doesn't see the tempo as much. Ole Miss moves quickly, not quite as quick as Missouri, but pretty quick. Challenges your defense. Isaiah Epps will have enough for the first down. Pick up a four. See the screen game as well for Kentucky. This game we hadn't seen a ton of it. Try to set one up earlier in this game. That's something that Eddie Grant can dial up as well, especially when they go multiple receivers into the boundary. Ole Miss has had some difficulty getting numbers to that side of the formation. And if you can do that, flip the ball out there quickly, you've got blockers. That's easy yardage that you can pick up. Ole Miss looking like they're going man on the outside. Three receivers to the wide side of the field. Benny Snell, your tailback out of that pistol, and they'll hand it off to him. Benny almost broke a tackle and had a lot of green grass, or I should say turf in front of him. Gates with his sixth tackle of the day. Gates and Snell jawing a little bit. Those guys have met each other a couple of times today. They're getting acquainted, 26 and three. And you know, without Breland Speaks, you would have to think that Kentucky would like their chances as they get into the two deep of the Ole Miss defensive front. Benny Snell averaging 90 yards a game on the ground. But Snell will watch his quarterback Johnson throw it to the tight end, C.J. Conrad. A gain of six, and that'll be close to a first down. C.J. Conrad. And as we mentioned, it started out nine catches, had those three touchdowns. That's pretty proficient at tight end, and then a four-game drought. And it's been a point of emphasis to get number 87 the football, and they have been successful, has Kentucky offensively, in finding it. Under four minutes to go before halftime. Johnson will split out wide. Benny Snell will take the Wildcat snap. And he'll take it to the 44 and a half yard line, pick up four, and that's a first down. You motion your quarterback out of the formation. And by running that Wildcat, you pick up a blocker. You got another guy who can get downhill quickly. And as we mentioned with Benny Snell, he'll bring his own blocker sometimes, even if you don't have it clean. He can pick up the yards needed to convert. He'll fake it to Snell. Roll Johnson near side. Pass is caught. That'll be another first down. Goes to Josh Ali. The redshirt freshman out of Hollywood, Florida, picks up 14. You get to rock a defense back on its heels. And you allow your athletic quarterback to throw on the run, move the pocket on an early down, and pick up yet another first down, hitting Josh Ali when you boot your QB. Snell inside the 40 down to the 38 pick up a four. Kentucky's going to run the football every time if they get that box. There's only five defenders in the box. They exploited that last week with Benny Snell and you can see the season has it been up and down. You could say that and especially when you look at Mississippi State only 18 yards on the ground for the focal point of this Kentucky offense at Benny Snell. But he asserted himself on the heels of that versus Tennessee last week. Second down. Johnson, quick slant. Another first down for the Cats. That one goes to Juice Johnson. That'll pick up 11. Actually, picks up 16. And Juice Johnson in the slot, singled up in coverage, and he's inside right now. So if you make an on time and on target throw, that's a reception versus the surest hand receiver you've got at Kentucky and another conversion. How many has Garrett Johnson done the most targeted receiver on third downs and on possession downs? Oh, 
Johnson to Johnson. Flag comes out. So they're going to get Taven Richardson this time for a hold, most likely, trying to get Johnson up cleanly. I give him credit for running off the field right next to his head coach. He was giving him <laughs> an earful. You got to find somewhere else to get to the sideline, <laughs> right. man. After the catch and during the run, personal foul, face mask number 11, offense. Oh. Penalties 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. That's a big one, obviously. Here's number 11 and Richardson. These receivers, they do block quite a bit. Yes, oh, yeah. There you see it. Easy Man. call for the official. He wouldn't even let go. Yeah, you got to let go. Eventually, especially. <laughs> the sooner the better. Right. Richardson over there talking with these receivers. If you're going to get those quick throws, those receivers turn into linemen in a lot of ways. They got to block. Deuce Johnson comes in motion behind the formation. They'll set up a middle screen. That'll go to Conrad. He'll get it back to the 30, but he's still about four yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. The tight end screen that Eddie Grant talked about. That time pretty well defended by Ole Miss. Stayed at home because there was a lot of eye candy going to the field side. We orbit motion. Garrett Johnson and Benny Snell out there in the flats calling for the football. Ole Miss stayed at home at linebacker and did a good job making the tackle on the tight end screen. So second down and long. Snell and King in the backfield. They'll dump it off to King. Tries to cut it back inside the 30 for a couple of yards. Now it's third and long. Clock under a minute. Kentucky has all three timeouts left. As soon as it ticks down, they know they got an explosive offense on the other side. A big third down. You could preserve some time if you're on this as well, thinking about getting another possession. It's almost like both these teams playing for halftime. About 30 seconds went off the clock as Johnson comes near side, and that ball is caught down around the one yard line. What a grab from Isaiah Epps. 28 yards, first and goal, Kentucky, 18 seconds to go. We talk about contested throws, 50-50 balls. This time matched up with Kadarius Webster coming back from having been banged up from the injuries. And Epps, the true freshman, coming down with the big catch in only 16 seconds. It's going to play out just the way Kentucky would have liked. Kentucky will take a timeout. It is first and goal cats when we come back. Do not forget that coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of Kentucky Wildcat Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Three tied in set on first and goal. Big Steven Johnson get that defender as far from the box as possible. He's almost out of bounds. So Snell in the Wildcat. Working the right side. His second touchdown today. Wildcat power. Logan Stenberg pulling from left guard, and he was just looking for somebody to hit. Big number 71. He was looking for some resistance, almost fell down, and Benny Snell that time stuck his foot in the dirt and got right downhill quickly. One after by McGinnis is good, but another couple of flags come down. Miss got some pressure right up the middle. I wonder if they're going to call holding there on the interior portion of the Kentucky front. Holding number 79 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay the try. Well, Luke Fortner holding somebody, but Benny Snell picks up his second touchdown today and his 11th 
of the season. And he's Snell, 66 yards on the ground. He's about 120 away from 2,000 for his career. Already ninth all-time in Kentucky in rushing, and he is just a sophomore. So an extended point after. That was all set up by a nice catch from Isaiah Epps on a third down and 11. And then it was Benny Snell doing what he does. And the best case scenario for Kentucky is Ole Miss didn't use any timeouts. They got the clock down to 13 seconds. I mean, you're, you're practically at halftime at this point. Get a decent yeah. kickoff. Don't risk anything, obviously, because the Ole Miss return game is dangerous with Jalen Jones back there. But, yeah, you preserved no time on the clock on a third and 10-plus. It played out perfectly for Kentucky to get the seven points and milk that clock down and virtually in this half. Kentucky's won three of their last four. The loss in that stretch was to Mississippi State when they got thumped 45 to seven. That was a, a game in which Nick Fitzgerald ran 12 times for 115 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Meanwhile, this Ole Miss team has lost four of their last five, actually five of their last six after they got off to a 2-0 start. And you talk to Matt Luke, and they'll tell you that that game at Cal in week three was the one that kind of was a turning point for this group. Fair catch call for him. Hey, coming up at 7.30 Eastern, it's our SEC Saturday night game. Southern Miss head to Knoxville to take on the Volunteers. Coming up right here on the SEC Network. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. Southern Miss has lost 15 of their last 16 to SEC teams. They have yet to win in five tries against the Volunteers. And, I, you know, it's... Tennessee's one of those teams that it's hard to turn away from. I mean, you just you just kind of watch to see what's going to happen. You get John Kelly back, and that's big. That Huge. changes what might happen, obviously, for a Tennessee offense that is desperate for key, key playmakers, guys that they can count on. Maybe his absence was the difference in the game a week ago with four turnovers versus Kentucky. Here's Wilkins. He'll pick up 12. I'll stop the clock momentarily at six seconds as he gets it to the 37-yard line. Well, how about Kentucky? Turns it over four times last week, and a couple of them were on first downs and midfield, but they were able to come away with a win and using that momentum here to take a 20-17 to lead at the break. Time for us to get it to the studio and Dari and the boys. Hi, right, gentlemen. Thank you much. Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report is now underway. Dari Noka, Chris Doring, Gene Chizik with you. Big touchdown for Benny Snell in a game that has just seen both offenses have success and, and defense is not necessarily getting the stop. Let me talk about Steven Johnson, man. This guy is the guy that does it for Kentucky's offense. And, you know, early in the season, I had doubts about him. Today, one, intercept, or one incompletion in the first half. The guy's rushing for 28 yards. He's catching passes for 32 yards. He does it all. I love the way that he leads this offense. I like what Eddie Grant has done because two things. Steven Johnson's been inconsistent the last couple of weeks. What he do today, easy access throws, mm -hmm. throwing some spot screens out there, building his confidence, and he's got to keep pounding the football because if you look back to last week, it was their best, per perhaps their best rushing performance yeah, of the year mm -hmm. with almost 300 yards against Tennessee. And he knows this is the worst rush defense in the league, and he's going to keep pounding the ball. They've already tried yeah. to rush for – 23, 24 yeah. times this, this uh, half. He's got to go with it. Props, too, to Jordan Tamu, who's continuing to play yes. well in relief of Shea Patterson. But let's get you to Mark Stoops, uh, who's standing by with Don Davenport. Well, Coach, you go Wildcat with Benny Snell to grab some momentum and the score heading into the half. What worked that drive? Well, you know, we, we've got to get some stops defensively. But offensively, we're moving the football. We're keeping them off balance. We're throwing it and running it well. You mentioned getting stops on defense. What kind of adjustments do you make for the second half? Uh, we got to be a little bit more urgent with the tempo. They're going fast, and uh, we've got some guys milling around a little bit, and then we got to tackle better. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. How about the number one team in the country? According to the playoff committee, that would be the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia alum Will Muschamp leading South Carolina between 
the hedges. First quarter scoreless, Tony, uh, Sony Michelle takes the direct snap, bounces it off to the right. Michelle in for the score. Hurts his rushing average. I mean, this guy is ripping off long gains all year long. That one there, nice job bouncing to the outside, getting in the end zone. <laughs> and then Jake Bentley. How about Brian Edwards? How about the throw, by well, the way? Yeah. Back shoulder? The throw, the catch. And again, this is what if South Carolina is going to stay in this football game, things like that have to continue to happen. If they get one on one shots, they're going to have to produce. Let's give credit to the officials, too. Two yeah. big reviews. You'll see the second one right here. They got it b right both times. And I love the way Dari Wims drags his foot rather than toe tapping it, catches the ball strong with his hands the first time. They review it and he gets the touch. There's your angle right there. Mm -hmm. And again, great throw by Jake Fromm there, too. I thought it was late when we yeah. first watched it. it yeah. like he, he put it out there exactly yeah. where he could get it. From 11 for 15 in the first half. They are underway now in the second half. Georgia football, pardon my peak here, as they uh, Nick Chubb just carried about three Gamecocks. They're inside the 30-yard uh, line here. But what have you seen to this point, Coach, that's allowed South Carolina to hang around a little bit? Now, that, they may not be around much longer but well they're playing point. with a lot of energy and a lot of passion they believe they can play with these guys because this is a confident football team that will Muschamp has really instilled particularly how they've won games the last three or four weeks I will say this they're loading the box they're putting them up there they know there's no way that they can they can eat without stopping this run yeah. game he's putting eight up in there he's putting nine up there he can't wake up tomorrow morning with Georgia rushing for 300 and feel good about himself, he's saying if you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me on the perimeter, throwing the game, throwing outside perimeter. If you can beat me that way, beat me. On the other side, Georgia's defense, we don't see them give up a lot of yards. Typically, they did it against Missouri in the first half. Remember, they came back and regrouped second half, blew right. Missouri out. But in the first half, they gave up almost 140 yards passing to Bentley. And this is an offense that can't run the football at all. I'd like to see Georgia's defense affect the quarterback a little bit more, see Carter, see Bellamy, some, see some of those guys put more pressure on Bentley. Only two sacks in the first half. South Carolina's been a little better running the football over the last two or three. Not weeks, today, though, my friend. Oh, oh yes. Last, well, Different last, defense. I thought yeah. you meant in Different general defense. they can't run the football. No, today, today yeah, against today. this defense. Well, They're not going to run the football at all. all right. I got you. 14-7. Misunderstood you. My fault. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. Obviously. Yes, we'll, <laughs> we'll handle that business <laughs> later. Uh, all right, meanwhile, the band is on the field. Wildcat marching band, you want to check them out, head on over to SEC Network Plus. Meanwhile, a big late touchdown in the first half makes two first half touchdowns for the SEC's leader in carries. Benny Snell stays busy, Cats lead by a field goal. This halftime report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Find your agent today at AutoOwners.com. Benny Snell with the touchdown Kentucky leading right now by a 20 to 17 score over Ole Miss. Dory Dory Chiswick, let's go Arkansas at home against a Coastal Carolina team that has lost seven straight games early in the first. Devois Whaley, five-yard score. Arkansas was up seven zip. Whaley, 48 yards carry, uh, yards rushing on seven carries to this point. Second quarter, now Hogs down. Hogs down to Coastal. Little dump off to TJ Hammonds. And Hammonds going to break free down the left sideline. 60 yards. Hogs right now late first going into the half up just 17-14. Guys, this is a big one. This is one of seven games nationally featuring a ranked team against a ranked team and it's at Bryant-Denny Stadium where LSU's actually 8-6 and six all time but they've lost six straight overall to Alabama. Tigers and Crimson Tide and Alabama. Maybe the being number two by the committee is the spark they might feed off of. I, I suspect that has come up in some way from yeah. Nick Saban. He'll tell the, uh, the media, I don't care about rankings, and he'll tell his team, they don't think you're the best. I love the signs in Alabama this week, too. Uh, we want Georgia. You know, they, rarely are they <laughs> ones that are calling anybody out. It's normally people calling them out, but a little different yeah. perspective this week. All right, how does LSU score enough? And I, look, last year, the defense, they always play well defensively, right? But they can't score 10 nothing a year ago. Chiz, how do they score enough points to make this interesting? Several things have to happen. First of all, they've got to get some, they've got to manufacture some yards on the ground. You're going to have to see a lot of tight end trades, a lot of movement, a lot of unbalanced. 
they got to get the jet sweeps going right now to try to maybe hit a big perimeter run. They know they're not going to consistently drive the football. That's not happening on this defense. you got to get that going. Next thing that's got to happen, like we saw in the Auburn game a few weeks ago, big plays down the field. DJ Shark had three or four catches down the field. Yeah. You may luck up and get two or three of them. I'm taking seven or eight shots. I'm looking for pass interference. He catches a big ball. Hey, and then the last thing, special teams have to be a factor. Alabama's had a punt blocked. DJ Shark's been very effective in the punt return. That's got to happen for them to. That's a bad plan punts. when I got. I'm home for pass interference. <laughs> Let me check my checklist of things that have to go right here. Hey. <laughs> Got to be perfect. Yeah, I, I, it's got to be perfect. And, and all that yeah. sounds great in theory, but we're talking about Alabama's defense here. They couldn't run the football last year or the year before against yeah. this defense. Right. They can't do it with this offensive line. All right. All right. Meanwhile, by the way, Georgia scored again. 21-7 now over South Carolina. Ole Miss down a field goal in Lexington. Thank you for watching the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Dari, Doring, and Chizik. Let's jump into some highlights from this week, 10 Saturday. And we start it with Florida. Their first game without Jim McElwain. It's Randy Shannon as the interim head coach as they visit a Missouri team that's playing good football against lesser competition, of course. Would that carry into conference play when you get the kind of help Florida gave them? Uh, yes, it will. Brandon Powell puts it on the ground. Malik Zaire then gets picked off. Zaire getting the start, but not the finish. What did you see from Zaire? Um, Thank you. Like okay, good. <laughs> you don't have to. No. Third and 13? Yeah. He had time. I mean, he created time. Four to five for 13 on third down, and then Drew Locke. He doesn't care that it's now November. But Locktober's over. Locktober work? I, I don't know. Jamon Moore, 43 yards. Yeah, I thought he was hot all day. I thought his precision timing, his accuracy, his decision making, everything tied into what he did in October. He has not slowed down. No, and normally that's not the case. He does slow down. He gets back into conference play and struggles, but this was a rout. Florida's now gone four straight games without reaching the 20-point mark as Missouri showed, you know what, they, not only are they better than Florida, they're by far yeah. from the worst team in this league. Um, and Which is may funny to say the because we had them ranked as yeah. the worst team in the league just a couple weeks ago. But the steady improvement since their bye week, they, they put up, what, 28 points against Georgia's defense. They've gotten better and better out of conference. And today we saw maybe the most complete game we've seen from them all year long. Now the complimentary running game to that passing game. Drew Locke only had to throw the ball, what, 20 times, I think. So they had great balance in production there. And they were able to protect the football, and they played great defense on the line of scrimmage there, just limiting the Gators to very little offensive. Well, players. again, who would have thought three or four weeks ago we were saying they have a chance to win seven games because they really legitimately, mm -hmm. if they stay on track with their improvement, can do that. Defensively today, I thought it was outstanding. Forced a couple of turnovers, uh, played really, really well. You didn't see receivers running, you know, free that we've seen before, yeah. turning, turning right. I just see Barry Odom having a huge impact on the defense. And then offensively today, they ran the football for the first time in a long time without mm -hmm. their number one tailback. I don't know if it was the rant or whatever it was, but there's been a spark lit under Missouri. And, and yeah, they played with energy. I thought that rant better. was a little needy and you know, begging a little earlier in the season. You change, by your, Barry you Odom, change a little bit? I don't know if it's yeah. the, that rant or what he did. Well, the players responded to it. Yeah, the players responded. They have responded. All right. Mm -hmm. You never ranted like that, Chizik. No, never. Yeah. The Texas A&M taking on Auburn. A&M, can they avoid any sort of second-half slide? Showing hints that maybe they were going to fall into one. Auburn, meanwhile, has got Georgia next week, so don't overlook the Aggies. Jarrett Stidham to Darius Slayton, 53 yards. This is going to be one of the keys to the game, in my opinion. Uh, Texas A&M likes to bring pressure. They gave opportunities on the outside that time. They were able to take advantage of it right before half. Yeah, then Nick Ruffin gets the block. Malik Miller, this late first half. Two quick touchdowns for the Tigers. They were up eight, third quarter. Stidham to Ryan Davis. Touchdown. Stidham ties a career best with three passing scores. They get 145 on the ground from on Johnson. They're starting to look the part. Are the Tigers not? Pretty complete without, football game. Without question and just in time because November's brutal. And that really measures how they do mm -hmm. for the rest of the season and how they'll always be remembered. But what I will say is this. They went on the road. Defense showed up. Huge fourth and two in the beginning of the fourth quarter, yeah. I believe. Huge fourth and two stop on the two-yard line. Turned into a 14-point swing. Defense was on point. I thought Jared Stenham today was awesome. 
When they came out in the second half, they started to run the football better. It was dealer's choice. He could throw it. Yeah. Um, on Johnson got his 120-plus yards again. Again, I think you're seeing a complete football team because special teams showed up today. That was a game changer before the half. Sorry, he talked defense there. He got that stop, fourth yeah. and two down around the goal line. I'm going to talk offense because they complimented the defense right there. I thought that was the biggest drive of the game. Up 15, yeah. they go 96 yards on Huge. 13 plays. They handed the ball to their tailbacks. Picked up, uh, what, uh, 69 yards on 11 carries there, and they iced over half the quarter right there, man. Four-minute drill times two. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Remarkable series, too. Since A&M came into the league, the road team is 6-0. It's odd. Okay. Mississippi State taking on an honorary member of the SEC, UMass. Might as well be, right? They feel like they play an SEC schedule. They've won two in a row. They beat App State last week. Ross Comas. To Andy Isabella, 69 yards, UMass takes the lead. I've seen this before. I saw it in the Auburn game, and that's what scares you about the inconsistencies that pop up every other week on this football team, and they're a great team. They got inconsistent. This is where they got it going, though. They got Nick Fitzgerald involved in the run game, and then the timely punt return to ice the football game. It was a one-possession game at that point in time, but able to get a big, long return by Dedrick Thomas for the 83-yard touchdown. Yeah, two more run rushing touchdowns for uh, Nicky Fitz as well. He also threw for 139, ran for 135. So they avoid disaster through the Bulldogs. How about Vanderbilt? Oh, do they need to stop a slide? I mean, my goodness, have they struggled since that 3-0 start. Haven't won since then. See ya. Uh, perhaps Steve Spurrier trolling the doors with that Western Kentucky shirt? Oh, oh. it's his son. His I son's know. on the staff. Quarterback coach of the topper, Shermer. Pass broken up, and Antoine Kincaid kicks it into the air and straight to the hands of Trey Ellis. That's when you're living right, and hey, you'll take them any way you get them. Pitches and touchdowns, right? I don't care if they're kicked in, thrown in. As matter. long as it's in. If it's long as it's in. Yeah, as long as it's in. Vandy does stop their slide as well, two-score game. Tennessee and Southern Miss. Is it tricky at Neyland? That's our primetime game, 730 Eastern. This Halftime Report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Find your agent today at autoowners.com. Well, two junior college quarterbacks having a exceptional afternoon leading their offenses. Kentucky just a bit better, leading at 20 to 17 after two quarters of football. Dave Neal back alongside Matt Stinchcomb. And Matt, really, both these quarterbacks have just lit up this place in the first half. Exceptional play from that position. You see 34 pass attempts across the both quarterbacks, and only five have hit the ground. I mean, they've done an excellent job of finding 15 different receivers Amongst these two teams, nine for Kentucky, six different people have caught the ball for Ole Miss. They're spreading the football around, and you see some of the ball fakes that they've been able to accomplish. And the other element, beyond just the passing game, we've seen them able to make plays with their legs. Steven Johnson, the athlete that he is, banged up in this game. We've seen them move the pocket a bit and also find a number of different people in their passing tree to get the ball downfield, including true freshmen like Isaiah Epps, set up that going into halftime touchdown, well executed by Kentucky, and that was able to put them back on top. How about those numbers from those guys? 29 completions. They are uh, playing at a very high level. Kentucky will have it first. Here's Bowden on a short kick. And he has stopped right at the 20-yard line. So here comes this Kentucky offense. Now, with that being said, Stinch, my, my question is, how do these defenses kind of adjust and try to slow these guys down? Well, you heard Coach Stoops coming in at halftime. He was talking about the balance that Kentucky's been able to strike in their drives. They've been able to keep Ole Miss on their heels, run the football enough. We mentioned moving the pocket, boots and nakeds, also getting that tight end incorporated. We saw Dawson Knox early versus Ole Miss. Couple shots downfield where he was able to get loose. But right now from Kentucky, we've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen their run game staples, the inside zone, the power encounter. We've seen a throwback. We've seen multiple screens, including a tight end middle screen. A lot in that playbook coming out in the first half. Steven Johnson goes under center, hands it to Benny Snell. 
Benny to the 25. Let's go downstairs to Dawn. Well, guys, Stephen Johnson, you mentioned 15 of 16 in that first half, but Ole Miss head coach Matt Luke said, yeah, he's been good. Our focus the second half is still to stop the run. He pointed out Benny Snell, 11 carries for 66 yards. He said that's what they will focus on. They got to keep him under 100. Boy, Benny Snell, that's going to be a tough task, the way he was running in the first half. Conrad. He is flipped up in the air and has the first down over the 30. That's a gain of seven. Well, that one stung a little bit, I think, on the big fella. It's just easy to get with early because it's off the of play action. It looks like one of those divide zones where Conrad comes all the way across the formation, except he's running a route. And that puts stress horizontally on those linebackers in coverage. They got to play run. And then when they realize that it's a boot, They've got to get out in coverage, and Conrad already outflanking the Ole Miss defense. That's easy yardage to pick up. Three receivers near side. Benny Snell, your tailback. He'll take that handoff. Boy, big hole off the left side over the 45 to the 46. 13 more yards for Mr. Snell. That's a light box. You mentioned the receivers outside. You've only got five defenders tackle to tackle. Kentucky's got the offensive lineman to block that. And then you hit, run a pull from your left side and you're picking up a blocker at the point of attack. And 26 already gotten a couple of carries in this half. And looks like he got off a little gingerly there. Wildcat with King taking the snap. And he'll get it to the Ole Miss 46 yard line. Go back to that last Benny Snell play. Well, let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. You got one, two, three, four, five defenders in this box. Well, you've got an extra blocker. You've actually won with numbers with the tight end in there. And so, because of that, you've got a double team at least in one spot. You pull a guard in another. That's advantageous for an offense and certainly for a running back in Benny Snell who can get loose into the secondary. Over the middle, Conrad wide open. Nobody's there. Touchdown, Kentucky, 46 yards. After going four games without a catch, they wanted to get 87 more involved, and I would say that they have done just that this afternoon. Austin McGinnis to, for the point after. And he will make it a 10 point game, a 27 17 opening drive of the third quarter. Very successful for Kentucky. When you hit it, Dave, CJ Conrad, he's been quiet for four games. Now here he is. And here's Demarcus Gates. And you'll see the eyes of the leading tackler of Ole Miss looking in the backfield. And CJ Conrad is all by himself makes the catch, and then makes the run into the end zone, and the Wildcats score early. Well, the Kentucky cheerleaders having something to cheer about here in the third quarter. 27-17, Eddie Graham, the offensive coordinator for the Cats with a good Opening drive here to start the third quarter. Five plays, 80 yards, 228 off the clock. Let's go back to that one more time. And what's going on with the formation defensively? Well, you look at it, and there's no safety help over the top. Look at this huge void, and there are no eligibles over here, but you've got a deep defender. So once the Marcus Gates gets frozen by the play action, you see the quick stutter. He knows he's beat. There's no help. There's nothing but turf between C.J. Conrad and the end zone. And you, you know, we've seen this a time or two from Ole Miss where they've had some difficulty in defensive alignment. That time, no help over the top. Four eligibles to the left side of the formation, and Conrad made them pay. Well, let's see what Ole Miss can do offensively to Amu. A solid first half for the Rebels. Will throw on first down, hits A.J. Brown. A.J. Hard to bring down, but he has pushed out of bounds after a six-yard pickup. A.J. Brown 
6 1, 225 out of Starkville, Mississippi. He's leading the conference in receiving yards per game, which is 14th best in the country. Almost 100 receiving yards per contest. Some pressure coming. A little delayed blitz by Jordan Jones and Ta'amu. Didn't look like he even saw. A loss of eight. Jordan Jones is just so explosive. So watch him. You're right. Delays and then comes. Run and play action. He ain't buying it. Wasn't much of a play action fake, incidentally, and Jones diagnoses it quickly. And he just runs straight down the hash. He ain't have to deviate. Hole opened up like a running back. Jones hit it. And the other Jordan and Tamu went down hard once again. We've seen Ole Miss. They get the ball out quickly, typically. Kentucky's been able to get home on a number of occasions. Now it's third down and a dozen. Long throw batted away. Lonnie Johnson on the coverage of Demarcus Lodge. We mentioned Lonnie Johnson and how he earned the start here today versus Ole Miss. And his plays like this one. You know, when he breaks on that route, he's going to deny that catch. He ain't going to let a catch happen in front of him, risk a missed tackle, make a break on that football, and bat it away. Fourth down, here comes Will Gleason. Matter of fact, we have two Australian punters, two guys that played Australian rules football going at it today. Gleason gets that punt away, no flag. There is a flag there, though. A couple of them come out. Get him for kick catch interference. Walker was coming up. Clearly signaled for the fair catch, and there was no room to make it. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Well, Kentucky had a great opening drive to start the third quarter. Then their defense came up with a couple of big plays to stop the Ole Miss offense. Jordan Jones with the sack of Jordan Tahamu did a nice play in the secondary from Lonnie Johnson. It has been some kind of cardiac season for Kentucky football fans. Against Florida, Austin McGinnis just shy on a 57-yarder to win it. Then, of course, Eastern Michigan came in here and scared Kentucky, but the Cats hold on 24-20, and, of course, last week. How about Steven Johnson coming out of the locker room looking like old Willis Reed with the Knicks back in the day and saving the day for Kentucky as they pick up the win against Tennessee. It has been one of those years for Kentucky. Matter of fact, the last two years, they have done very well in close contests. They've won eight of ten that have been decided by a touchdown or less. So they're, they're, how about what they have done this year in those games? Well, that's been really the difference. You look at the, the Florida game, and anybody that's paid any attention to Kentucky this year recognized that's a game they easily could have won, quite literally giving it away to the Gators. Mississippi State got away from them pretty quickly, but yet those close games among them, you know, special teams has figured very prominently. You think about a block yeah. punt versus Eastern Michigan. They get a block field goal versus Missouri. I mean, there have been some plays this year that have been made at key moments. Fake punt as well late in the game versus the Tigers. The special teams has been a big part of why they've won some of these close games. Third down coming up for Kentucky. Snell slides to the right in the 42 and a half yard line. Here comes some heat from Ole Miss. A little run blitz, and it works well. Nice call from Wesley McGriff, defensive coordinator at Ole Miss, a loss of two. It's a look that Ole Miss has shown quite a bit, especially on third down. You see Kentucky there for a second. Looked like they were considering maybe going for it. Really, DeMarcus Gates was the one that made that play. 
He was blitzing. He got great push versus Bunchy Stallings. Made Benny Snell kind of deviate, bubble his run. Good job by number three along the line of scrimmage of moving the line of scrimmage. Hanton's punts. Fair catch called for at the five yard line. We'll take a timeout. Ole Miss with the football down 10. Kentucky and Ole Miss meeting for the first time on the gridiron since 2011. Here at Kroger Field, which opened for business back in 1973, but of course, a $126 million renovation prior to the 2015 season. Capacity at 61,000. Ole Miss backed up inside their 10. They are down 10. Oh, hand it off to Wilkins. Stays on his feet, boy. Almost got through there. That'll be a gain of seven. You see why Wilkins can be dangerous. We've seen this a couple of times. He had a big third down conversion in the first half after contact. That's excellent balance. Keeps those feet churning. There's A.J. Brown, and he'll have the first down at the 25-yard line. Pick up a 14. Kendall Randolph dragged him down. Such a big target in the slot. You know, when you see in your exchange in that time, Edwards, number seven, who's usually lined up over Brown, Heading on the pressure and Randolph a little bit late coming down from his safety position. Wilkins trying to kick it to the outside. They'll get it to the 32 yard line. Pick up a five. There's some of that Ole Miss tempo. Kentucky had some issues with it a few times in the first half. Ole Miss tempo and Ole Miss balance. Something that Matt House talked about. He said, who's the key to this offense? He didn't mention a receiver. He mentioned Wilkins. If they can get him going, be very difficult to defend both phases. And Wilkins slips on the turf. He'll lose a couple of yards. Well, here's a name we hadn't called all game. And he's kind of had some tough times. You see Wilkins coming off the field, but big Matt Elam blows this play up. Watch him right here in the middle. He just blows right through two blockers and disrupts the entire play. Dawson Knox, who's pulling on the counter, Ends up making the tackle because of the contact for Big Matt Eden. Now Pittman in the game. That running back on a third down and eight. Tom Moo. That pass is caught by Brown. A flag comes in. An amazing grab by A.J. Brown. 14-yard pickup. How did he catch that? Kendall Randolph was all over him. Mike Edwards looked like he was going to get this pass breakup. And I think perhaps the officials are saying he got there a little bit early. We asked Edwards about this matchup. Pass interference, number seven defense. The penalties decline, result of the play as a first down. We talk about A.J. Brown being such a big target in the slot. And Mike Edwards, he sees Garrett Juice Johnson in practice all the time. And that time he fights his way through early coverage, we'll call it. Plenty of contact there from Edwards. And you see the length of Brown on that reception. A little pump fake from Tamu. Boy, Knox turns around, makes a catch behind him. A former high school quarterback. You said it, coaches love his hands, and you saw that. He just picked that right out of the air, moving one way, ball going the other. Once again, we see Tamu. He kind of pump fakes on the swing pass. And that freezes linebackers just enough, opens up the window for Knox at tight end. And another completion to number nine. So you got Brown and Knox, two big targets in the trips formation to the left. Blitz coming. Damu on his feet and he'll take it to the 35 yard line. See, that's the difference in Tamu and Shea Patterson. Breaks down early, 
Shea Patterson still scrambling around behind the line of scrimmage. Tom Moo's not going to do that. He's going to tuck it and run it and try to pick up yards. That can stress a secondary. Taking a look at Wilkins, who hobbled off. An injured Kentucky player on the field. We'll step aside back in a moment. Welcome back to Lexington, Kentucky, leading it 27 to 17 in the second half. You saw Jordan Wilkins, the running back for Ole Miss, go out of the game. It's a right ankle, the same one that he has been dealing with that's been hurt the last two weeks. Wasn't putting a ton of weight on it over here, but he has his helmet on. No official word. He is not getting any treatment from trainers right now. Yeah, he's just been bothered by that ankle for a while. Matter of fact, last week we knew he was going to play a little bit. We didn't know how much they'd get out of him, but second play of the game, he goes 64 yards. His final campaign in an Ole Miss jersey. He wants to go out with a flurry. Here's a great inside handoff. Pinneman, big hole, still on his feet to the 15. He's kind of a short yardage guy, but showing you some legs there. Great hole on the right side of the Ole Miss offensive front. Pittman gets downhill right now. Lead block. Dawson Knox coming up in there. A huge hole. And Ole Miss in the red zone. 20-yard pickup makes it first down and 10 for the 15. Quick throw to the wide side. That one will go to Van Jefferson. He'll pick up five. Derek Beatty brings him down. Pretty good tackle by Derek Beatty. Here we go again, Stitch. Red zone opportunity yeah. for Ole Miss. And at this point, you, you got to get in the end zone. Well, it's been a slow start, certainly, to that second half. When Kentucky came out of the locker room rocking and rolling, you want to come away with the touchdown. Damu keeps it, and he'll be dropped around the 11. That'll be a loss of a yard. Jordan Jones with his fifth tackle today. They've been able to bottle up Tamu more so certainly than we saw a week ago versus Arkansas. And what you got to be mindful of here is the size of the Ole Miss receivers. If they were able to get something there towards the boundary, throw something high and challenge these DBs, don't have to. Greg Little backs up. Number 74 offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. It's not that loud. I mean, you just can't do that right there. You know, you're a little bit worried, obviously. When we talk about the Blitz brothers. You got Denzel Ware lined up over your hat. Now the crowd's into it. You've almost invited the crowd noise if you're an old lineman in a visiting stadium. Have to get it inside the five yard line for a first down. Play clock down to three. Two. Right. Did not get it off. Another five yards. Before the snap, play game, number 10, offense. Five yard penalty, so far down. Well, the good news is, is this is a team that struggles in the red zone, and now they are out of the <laughs> red zone. And you see Matt Luke saying, look, we got to focus. We talked to the coaches about that. So, coach, what's the deal? Y'all are getting down there. Coming into this game, Ole Miss had 31 possessions in the red zone, but only 51% of the time were they able to convert those. What was the deal? It's just a focus thing. And right now, back-to-back -back penalties taking them outside the 20-yard line. Incomplete. Penalty marker down. At the 25 yard line. Holding number 50 offense. Wow. Coaches decline fourth down. This has not been a good series for the Rebels. Uh, it, it, it could not have gone more poorly, short of a, a turnover going the other direction. We've got an excellent field, field goal kicker in Wonderlet. Watch Rawlings right here. He's in the middle. Was concussed last week. He's working against Middleton. You see, he's just got a handful of jersey. And the difficult part when you got a scrambling quarterback is you don't know where he's leaking. 
38 yarder on the way from Gary Wonderlich. And he nails another one. He's hit from 33 and 38. It's a seven point game, 343 to go third quarter. Well, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. Very lucky we had the ESPN app today with four conference games going on. Yeah. Kicking off at noon Eastern time today. A ton of action going on in college football. And some great games early on. Highly ranked teams trailing on the road. Ohio State behind Iowa earlier today. Still down now. Luke Logan will kick it away for Ole Miss, the redshirt freshman out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And Lynn Bowden. Boy, they're trying to get Lynn the ball more. You can tell it's an obvious attempt to get him some more touches. A true freshman, a guy who's still kind of getting used to the pace of play, the level of play. But dangerous whenever he has the ball, including in returns. You will catch that one at the three. And he'll be stopped shy of the 20-yard line again. I mentioned Lynn Bowden. He might learn from that one. Let that one bounce yeah. out of bounds. Take the field position. Some Southeastern Conference headlines. Georgia, of course, number one this week in the first college football playoff rankings. They are in a real fight with South Carolina in Athens right now. And surprisingly, Auburn AD Jay Jacobs announces his resignation. That will take effect no later than June 1st of 2018. And Jay, one of our favorite guys, and wish him the best in whatever he decides to do down the road. And how about Florida? What? I, wow. I mean, Missouri just put it on him now. Uh, you wonder, you know, that's, that's a hard thing to watch. If you're a Florida fan, you never want to get beaten that badly. but. What you don't want to see is a team lay down. It's hard to imagine that that margin would have occurred today. Eddie Snell running out of bounds by Hamilton. Picks up three. Jaden Hamilton was a guy, we know we're going to see him today. Banged up last week. Concussion protocol, a couple of different players for Ole Miss. Thought they might have been a little bit shorthanded in the secondary, able to get him back. He and Cedric Woods both in the Ole Miss defensive backfield. King and Snell in the backfield for Kentucky. On second down and eight. Johnson. That one is incomplete. He put Richardson kind of in a tough spot to make the catch. Hamilton on the coverage. He wanted it earlier. And he didn't have it. So he kind of had that quick hitch. Came back down and stayed with Richardson. Ended up trying to jam one in there. Long third down, as we mentioned. Johnson right here, usually a favorite target of Steven Johnson. Last week, Arkansas able to convert 12 of 19 third downs against Ole Miss. Kentucky five out of eight today. And that one was a poor throw. He was looking for Juice Johnson, but well behind him. And now here comes the Kentucky punt team. And Steven Johnson, I thought he looked a little yeah. gimpy a second ago. You know, as he was walking from the previous play, you can see him. He's definitely got a hitch there. And you wonder if that's impacted this throw. You see him kind of trying to list away from that pressure late. You could tell he's favoring that left leg. A.J. Brown makes a fair catch. A flag comes in on the far side, right in front of the Ole Miss bench. Holding against Ole Miss, it appears, against maybe one of those gunners. Holding, number 28, receiving team. During the kick, the penalty is 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. 
Boy, Ole Miss having a hard time getting out of their own way right now. But let's go back to Steven Johnson as he's getting worked on. Maybe this is what happened to the quarterback. It was on the previous play, not the last play. See here late. Weird. He's up getting fallen on. See right there, maybe a little bit of tweak. He's already got a brace on that left knee, and Logan Stenberg is kind of finishing his man to the ground. And as we saw Drew Barker briefly last week in relief of Steven Johnson when he got banged up. Barker came in, actually had a fumble on a scramble. A.J. Brown with a little bit like CFL motion. Pass is caught. Nice catch on the far side. Should be good enough for a first down. Ten yard pickup. That one goes to Metcalf. How about that? That orbit motion. They do that a lot with A.J. Brown from his slot position. They'll blow him through the backfield behind the quarterback. There is A.J. Another quick slant. They have had success with that play. Dole number one. Jordan Griffin on the coverage. Gain of nine. And now it looks like A.J. Brown slow to get up. I just wonder if it's fatigue. You went in orbit motion, yeah. then they go tempo. Chains weren't anywhere close to being set up. Second down and a couple. Damu trying to take a shot, has a man. Pass is caught. Metcalf, touchdown. What a throw from Ta'amu. 58 yards. Ole Miss left nothing to chance on that one. They went maximum protection. They weren't going to risk any type of pressure. Seven men in to protect. And Metcalf just runs right by Lonnie Johnson. And another one of those vertical routes. When you let Ole Miss, if they're allowed to maintain possession, they're going to take a couple of shots. They're going to throw haymakers, and eventually they'll hit. Point after is up and good. DK Metcalf, the redshirt freshman out of Oxford, Mississippi, the son of Terrence, who so played at Ole Miss. Yeah, here he is up top, man to man, You're by yourself. So you try to get there with four, not versus a seven man protection. And Metcalf just runs right by Lonnie Johnson. That is a big man, 6'4, almost 230 pounds. Working against 6-3, incidentally. Jordan Tombo now with three touchdown passes on the day. He is 22 of 28, 312 yards. Now you can't be too terribly surprised. You, know, you look at Kentucky coming into this game. They've struggled in pass defense this season at times. Versus a team that, you know, look, Jordan Tamu in his first start last week threw for 368 yards. It wasn't like he got out yeah. there and said, I'm not real sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, he's more than comfortable, and he's got plenty of targets in his receiving court. How was this guy just, you know, you think about some of these junior college transfers and how they end up where they end up. There's Bowden on this return. Flags come out, and he's got some running room. Bowden. He's to the 40. Makes another man miss. And Bowden all the way down to the 15 yard line. But there is a flag back at the 22. Well, this was likely coming back. Bowden gets banged up. He certainly gassed. Even if he wasn't injured, you weren't going to get him for a couple of plays, at least this offensive possession, just from fatigue. That is not a good look. During the return, holding number 16 return team. Penalties half the distance to the goal to the spot of the foul. First down. We talk about that kind of spate of injuries for Ole Miss. Three in a row. Right here. You kind of open the gate. Yeah, you make it too easy. You spin the guy completely around and Marcus Walker. Now we're going to bring that return all the way back to add insult to injury. Literally, as you see Bowden working his way over to get evaluated. That is the worst of both worlds if you're Kentucky. Now Steven Johnson will limp out. 
to try to run the offense here. They'll be first down and 10 from the 10 in a tie ball game 27 apiece. That handoff gets three. One thirty left to go here in the third quarter. Boy, it looked like Kentucky was going to take control of this game. Their opening drive of the third quarter, they just marched it right down the field. And then it works right, works in their favor. You get a red zone possession, you got to defend. You go backwards, you kick a field goal, you get a penalty off a punt, and a big play puts Ole Miss right back into it. Johnson coming near side, passes battered away. Incomplete. Let's get an update. Yeah, Dave Stinch, this one's been ugly in Fayetteville, Arkansas, down to Coastal Carolina, 28-17. Austin Cantrell touchdown. They went for two and got it. Hogs are still down three to Coastal. My goodness. Wow. I mean, uh, you look at it last week, and Ole Miss almost gift wrapped that that victory to Arkansas. They had to put one drive, otherwise they had a short field and then a scoop and score. And that was the difference in the game for Arkansas in getting their victory over Ole Miss. Play clock down to four. High throw right through the hands of Isaiah Epps. It's incomplete. And there's a little energy on that Ole Miss sideline now as they force what appears to be a punt. Well, it's an understatement to say it's a big third down with the momentum changing. And Isaiah Epps, we mentioned the true freshman, made the big catch right before half. That time he's got to come down with it for his quarterback. Would have been a big conversion for the Kentucky offense. Three straight punts now for Kentucky after that opening touchdown drive of the third quarter. Matt Patton's punt fielded by A.J. Brown. Breaks a couple of tackles, stutter steps, gets a block. A.J. inside the 40 to the 38 and a short field coming up for Ole Miss. But a flag. No, no flag. Well, I was told there was a flag. There is no flag. So 38-yard line for Ole Miss. This is where the Kentucky defense, they got to come through right here. They got to find a way to slow down Ole Miss. And we mentioned earlier, you know, the vertical routes, the constant challenging. If you allow Ole Miss to maintain possession, you know, it's like sitting back down when the odds are against you. Eventually, they get a chance to hit one of their big plays. 40 seconds to go, third quarter. Penniman this time. Getting swarmed by blue jerseys, but they can't get him down. All the way down to the 30-yard line. Give him seven and a half. That is just a bulldozer coming right at you. Well, Big Penniman, you mentioned he's more of the physical back. This play was dead in the water. Denzel Ware did a great job cutting the puller and creating a pile in the backfield. Didn't matter because as the defense rallied to the ball, Penniman just carried him for another four yards. Penniman will cut it. He'll get it to the 28-yard line. That'll be real close to the line to make. End of the third quarter. And that'll do it for the third quarter of football. Wilkins a little banged up, but still showing. He's got some juice in him. Tied at 27 with 15 more minutes to go. Miss and Kentucky tied at 27, 15 more minutes of football. Third down and short for Ole Miss. They got the big boys in there. They'll hand it to Swinney, and he is stopped for a loss. Kentucky wins that battle, a loss of three. Why Swinney and no Pinnaman? That's a great question. What a great play, though, off the edge. 
Darius West just comes flying in there. Chris Westry does a great job setting the edge, and West makes first contact in the offensive backfield, and that's exactly what the Kentucky defense needed to do. 49-yard field goal attempt from Gary Wunderlich. And it is good. He sneaks it in the uprights. Matt Luke fired up. His club has taken the lead. How about the resilience of the Ole Miss Rebels? How many different times this season where this team could have just folded it up? And in this game, they're behind early. They're behind in the second half. It looks like it's swinging the other way, and Gary Wunderlich comes in to put the Rebels ahead. Matt Luke, he's got the joystick on that kick, didn't he? He's pointing that thing. We need to sneak it left just a little bit. Wonderlick's long this year was 39. He had missed twice from beyond 40, but got that one to slide through. And so now for Kentucky, Lynn Bowden out there to receive this kick, which if you're a Wildcat fan, you know, that's a good sight to see. He was limping earlier. But you've seen your quarterback and Steven Johnson nicked up a little bit. We've seen Benny Snell limping a little bit early on this half. This is the moment when you need those guys to step up the most. We talk about close victories. These are fourth quarter games that Kentucky have found themselves in. 17 unanswered by Ole Miss has given them the three point lead. And a flag down. Looks like Ole Miss offsides on the kick. Here's Bowden. He is out to the 26 yard line. Boy, these are the kind of penalties that's got to that have to drive your coaches crazy. Right, you're sitting there and it's like anything else. It's procedure penalties, pre-snap penalties. Outside, number 20 kicking team. Penalties five yards from the end of the run. First down, Kentucky. Go downstairs, get an update from Dawn. Well, Dave, a couple of injury updates. Lyndon Bowden had his left ankle taped over his shoe, was running up and down the sideline. Same thing for quarterback Steven Johnson, left ankle taped over his shoe. Remember, Eddie Grant told us this is one of the toughest kids that he has ever coached, so you know he's good to go. And a real leader and has the respect of all his teammates. Last three Kentucky drives. Nine plays, 10 yards, resulted in three punts. And you can see O for his last four pass attempts. There's Benny Snell. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Well, we mentioned earlier, though, Kentucky hitting a shot, stretching the field. Seen a couple of those plays, quarterback throwback. But right now, we haven't seen them try to stretch it downfield. In some time. And if that Ole Miss defense is able to key on the run, that can be problematic, especially if they're spinning the safety down late. Here's Snell. Well played by Miles Hartsfield. Give him four and a half. Now it's third down. But there is the drive chart for Kentucky here in the second half. Those are quick. I mean, you're talking about getting the ball right back. To your opponent. You gotta try to find ways to sustain drives. Third down. And let's call it two. Johnson rolling into some traffic, and he has dropped back at the 35. A loss of four. He is slow to get up. Another shot on the Kentucky quarterback. See that brace leg? We always talk about the defense getting that big stop on third down and negative yardage play, forcing a field goal attempt. And once again, the offense incapable of getting anything going. Good job by this Ole Miss rush defense defending two Benny Snell runs and then getting a negative yardage play. Fourth straight punt for Matt Panton. A.J. Brown, fair catch at the 25-yard line. 
Some good defense. Haven't said that a whole lot this year for Ole Miss, but they come up with a big play here to stop Steven Johnson and Kentucky. Head coach Matt Luke thinks his team has some momentum. Dari Noka in studio. It's about to be over in Athens. Number one, Georgia going to hang on to that ranking, it would appear. Jake Bentley picked off for the second time today. Georgia trying to run out the last 105 seconds, guys. So how about Georgia if Kentucky can't find a way to start moving the football and get some points on the board? Georgia will win the SEC East. They need a Kentucky loss. They did their job in Athens today. And We'll see if Ole Miss can keep their offense going. And with an injured Jordan Wilkins on the sideline, they get seven yards from Penniman, who has come off the bench and had a big impact on this game. Yeah, he's run the ball very, very well, not just with power, but we've seen some speed from the big fella. He's just a load to bring down at 5'11", 240 pounds, a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. He'll pick up a couple, so third down and short now for the Rebels. And you can see the Rebels in their tempo game just jumping right back down. Penniman gets the first down out to the 38-yard line. That's that power that we talk about, the yards after contact, is you have to get on a third down conversion and Ole Miss jumping the football yet again after three straight runs. Looks like Jordan Jones, who just came back a couple of games ago versus Mississippi State, is down. We'll step aside back in a moment. Jordan Jones got cleated on that last possession. Looks like he might be all right to return to the game here in a few moments. We'll keep an eye on him. Take a look at our all-state college football playoff rankings in Georgia. Did what they needed to do against South Carolina. Alabama LSU coming up later tonight. Notre Dame is knocking off Wake Forest as we speak. Clemson up 10 against NC State. But Ohio State getting throttled while Penn State is tied. Some crazy scores on this Saturday. Kind of nutty in the Big Ten today. You know, what's going to happen with all those top end teams? Wisconsin, the only team handling business. To Amu. Pass is caught on the far side to Marcus Lodge, and he'll get out of bounds just past the line to make near the 50-yard line, a gain of 11. This Ole Miss offense, ever since that opening possession where they got stopped, have been on a roll. Last three, 21 plays, 156 yards, a couple of scores, and a field goal. Boy, Kentucky just having a hard time getting Penniman down to the ground. They'll tolerate that one, though, because what we've seen from Penniman so far is they can't get him down to the ground, and he's gaining yards. That time, at least they kind of diverted his momentum and pushed him down the line of scrimmage. Tamu having a heck of a game with three touchdown passes and no picks. Pressure comes. He sees it. He feels it. Will scramble. Tamu will slide. There's a flag down in the middle of the field. Number 50, offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. That's twice now on Sean Rawlings, and that time he was just kind of bear hugging Calvin Taylor. They've gotten him twice when he gets his hands out wide. This is another quarterback scramble. A really great job by Tamu. You see those hands going up. Whenever the defensive lineman starts waving around, flopping their hands around, those refs love to throw flags. That was the correct call. Rawlings backing up Ole Miss after a nice scramble. Second and 18, quarterback draw. Tamu gets it across the midfield stripe. He'll pick up nine. 
So third down and nine. And that time, as you mentioned, quarterback draw all the way back to back runs, one on a scramble and the other in the draw game to at least get inside the sticks. To Amu trying to buy some time. Can't get out of the grasp of Courtney Love. A loss of 10. And Kentucky holds. Great job by Kentucky in the scramble drill. Because this was a Shea Patterson snap for the Ole Miss offense. Tamu, instead of attacking the line of scrimmage when protection broke down, he scrambled to throw. Nowhere to go with the football. You got to throw that football away so that you don't lose the yardage that you just gained on the quarterback draw. Will Gleason averaging 42 and a half yards a punt this year. Can kick with either foot. Goes with the left foot. And that one will hit at the 10, and that's where Ole Miss will down it there. 49-yard punt. Kentucky down three, 8.36 to go. There is a penalty back in the U.K. logo. From the end of the kick, first down Kentucky. Timeout. So... Kentucky will have the football when we come back to Kroger Field in Lexington. Ole Miss leading by three, 8.36 to play from the Commonwealth. And if you're Kentucky offensively, how do you get this going? It, it has been a struggle here the last uh, 45 minutes or so. Well, and the difficulty is right now you're somewhat limited at quarterback. Yeah, he's tough. Steven Johnson is. This is more in the shoulder now. Apparently his knee's a little bit nicked up. Hurts in the zone read game when your quarterback wants to pull it. Even at the 26, probably a good idea. Benny Snell Jr., big gainer. Out over the 20 to the 24-yard line. Boy, a 19-yard pickup. And you can't say enough about how important that run really is because you're in your coming out offense, you're on your own five-yard line. If you have to punt right here, the statistics are overwhelming in favor of the defense coming away with at least a field goal if you have to punt the football away. Getting that first first down and you're coming out offense is crucial. Benny Snell again on the carry. Benny up to 21 carries, picks up four. As high this year is 32 rushes. And we were talking to coaches about uh, can you can you just keep feeding him? He, they were like, absolutely. He is 30 plus carries. We're good to go with that as long as he's healthy. He's a workhorse. And you know, we mentioned Saheem King. They want to get them a little bit more touches. You know, he's not on the field, and Steven Johnson's not even going to hand it off. Guaranteed, Benny Snell touches it right here. He's in the Wildcat. Johnson comes back in motion. Snell working the left side on second down. We'll get. Maybe a couple of yards. So now it's a third down situation. And here's the difference. We we're talking about like what do they need to do? They've had some success running the football on first down. It's second down efficiency. They've kept it on the ground. It's a three point game. And they're getting stuffed on second down to where it's not third and short. Last it was a third and two. We saw a bootleg and it was ill fated with the sack ultimately on Steven Johnson. Another third and short here. If Ole Miss shows pressure. I wouldn't be surprised if Kentucky runs out. Johnson looking to throw. What a catch for the first down at the 37 yard line. Charles Walker. What a grab. And Logan Stenberg got beat right now and Charles Walker. Well, that's a circus catch. Great body control because he's breaking outside. He stops, leans back, and stops that football with his right hand. And Walker, a guy that doesn't get a ton of looks, does a lot of blocking at receiver, but a big conversion there. Little reverse to Johnson looking to throw. And he'll be dropped back at the 29-yard line. Ole Miss had a read on that one the entire way, a loss of five. Never really sold that one that well. And, you know, Walker doesn't get a ton of those. 
So you almost smell a rat right out of the gate. 88 gets the tap pass from Benny Snell. Then he flips it to Johnson. There's nowhere to go. Safety never bit on it. And you get a big negative yardage play there. You mentioned taking shots. That's an opportunity maybe just to gain some positive yards and move the sticks. Quick hitter to Bowden. First down, Kentucky. Let's get a quick update, Dart. Guys, barring an incredible comeback, the SEC's worst loss this season will belong to Arkansas. Coastal Carolina touchdown puts the shot it clears up 13 points with under 13 minutes to go. That is just crazy, Dart. They come in one and seven. Yeah, that was, that's hard to wrap your head around. And Arkansas just beat this little Miss Rutherford. Gain of seven for Benny Snell. Benny just bowling his way. That completion to Bowden was enormous. You get the negative yardage play off a gimmick. It's second and 10 plus. You're off schedule and you're on the minus side of the field. And you get a huge completion and an opportunity now. Keep the ball on the ground in a three point game. And Benny the Bull just finding his way to chip away at the yardage needed to convert the sticks. Here's Benny again, gets the handoff, big hole off the right side. Snell out of bounds inside the 25 yard line. They are riding 2 6 all the way to the house on this drive. 21 more yards. Great job. On the right side, George Asato at Jay doing a great job at right tackle, sealing the edge. They're running at Marquise Haynes, and they were able to get loose and outside. That was the split backfield look where that quarterback can pull it and throw it to Sahim King. You're not going to see a whole lot of pool game. And now back in the Wildcat. 24 carries, 153 yards for Benny Snell. He'll take the snap here. Snell down to the 10 yard line and another Kentucky first down. Give him 13 more yards. I love his patience. Let the play develop in front of you. You're pulling, there's a lot of traffic. Just wait. Just enough for him to set it up. We heard Rudy Johnson was the name back at Auburn years ago when Eddie Grant was there and Tommy Tuberville. Said number 26 reminds him of Johnson. That's a pretty nice comparison. How about Benny Snell? Had 180 yards rushing against Tennessee last weekend. Now up to 166. Timeout. Crowd loving big Benny Snell today. Dari OK in studio. Reminder coming up still. Butch Jones in Tennessee back home against Southern Miss. The Vols obviously struggling. 3-0 and in non-conference play, though. That came about a half hour from now. Let's get it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Dari. And this is coming down to the wire again. This is nothing new for Kentucky, but they've been riding that guy right there, Benny Snell, Jr. This drive, 67 yards on the ground. Big personnel in there, two tight ends, three tight ends. A lot of bodies in the box. Out of that Wildcat, Snell off the left side, down to the goal line. They'll spot him just shot. Kentucky's found stability from guard to guard. They moved Drake Jackson in the center. Bunchy Stallings to the right guard. Logan Stenberg at left guard. And it's been the difference for this offensive front. Nice block by center Drake Jackson getting pushed right there in the middle. Not going to happen on that play as Gates comes up to hit Benny Snell. 13 tackles today for Gates. Now up to 85 on the season. We've so, seen Wildcat snaps all through, throughout this drive, Dave. They're not going to get away from it now. You see Benny Snell, he's a little bit blown. This is where you just got to gut it out one more time from the one yard line.
In the Wildcat, Snell cuts it back, touchdown, Kentucky. The third time today, Benny Snell has crossed the goal line, and this one gives Kentucky a three-point lead for a moment. So the zone play, and there was backside penetration. Snell did a, did a great job of pressing the point of attack and getting it into the end zone. Point after, up and good from Austin McGinnis, and now it is a four-point advantage. 12 plays, 95 yards, and Benny Snell was the man. Hey, we said, what do they need to do to get going offensively? You make a defense go to the rodeo. You got to ride the bull, and Benny makes it all the way down to pay dirt, and he earned every inch of it. Snaps out of the Wildcat, muscling his way into the end zone to put his Wildcat team back on top. How about nine rushes, 77 yards on that drive? On that drive alone. That's a guy who says, just hop on. That's I'm going right. to get you where you need to go. Hey, man, saddle up. Yep. If you're wearing the blue. And if you're wearing the white colored jerseys, man, I'm throwing you off. How many times we've seen this since Benny Snell has gotten to Kentucky where they need a drive to either go ahead to ice a game. They jump in the Wildcat formation and they ask number 26 to move the football. Now Ole Miss, a couple of timeouts left. 214 is an eternity for their offense. Yeah, we've seen that obviously throughout this game, right when you think the Rebels are out of it, and they're able to hit a home run to get right back in it. Fair catch called for by Ole Miss. Jordan to Amu will trot back on the field. A junior college transfer making his second career start. 323 yards today, 368 last week, and they'll need him to be clutch down the final 214. He'll be smart with this football, a situation that he hasn't really found himself in. Obviously, Arkansas drove the ball late a week ago. Here you are, you're down. That was to go ahead for the Razorbacks. This time, you're trying to get back on top with time left on the clock. Can you manage this offense and make good decisions? Jordan Wilkins back on the field for Ole Miss. The running back will slide out to the right and drop the pass. Incomplete. Low throw from Ta'amu. Yeah, not the best ball from Ta'amu. Kind of guided that pass, it looked like. It's an easy pitch and catch, and sometimes those you think about a little too much. Looks like Kentucky would have had that well defended regardless, even if the completion was made just as well, maybe, with the incomplete pass so you don't get yardage lost. To Amu. Pass caught out over the 40 to the 43. Van Jefferson will give Ole Miss a first down after a 13-yard pickup. This is where the offensive line will be challenged by Ole Miss as well. Josh Allen on one end, Denzel Ware on the other. Can they protect? Tamu did a great job scrambling away and staying alive. Tamu buying a little time, throws behind Van Jefferson. Let's get an update. Dari, what's going on? Well, it's another weekend of mayhem when it comes to the playoff race. First off, Penn State, Michigan State. Matt Coughlin, your game winner. Penn State's lost two in a row. Guys, Ohio State minutes away from going down at Iowa. Shake it up. You're not kidding. Blow it up. <laughs> to Amu. Swing it out to Wilkins. He's to midfield. That'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Jordan Jones making the tackle for Kentucky. Another big third down, of course. You see Matt Luke. He wants to talk about it. That'll leave Ole Miss with one timeout. Well, if you're just joining us, 
C.J. Conrad on the opening drive of the second half was a touchdown. Kind of got him going. And then Ole Miss, boy, they found some offense as they hit D.K. Metcalf and then a long field goal from Gary Wonderlook. And then Benny Snell just moments ago would give Kentucky the lead at 34-30. It's been an entertaining game. Hey, one thing about Ole Miss, they're going to give you some entertainment. Where are they? In mean, Kentucky, you know about them. Everything comes down to the final possession. That's exactly They insist on it. <laughs> right. They refuse to make it go one way or the other. Last week we saw it. Ole Miss raced out to a lead, gave it up, made it a tight game. This time they've had to battle their way back into this contest on a couple of occasions. A huge third down here at midfield to try to stretch this possession. Wilkins. I think they'll give him the favorable spot for the first down. We're going to stop the clock for a moment. Give it a good look. And yes, it is a first down. 129 to play. Once again, Ole Miss going with their go-to run. That counter look. They pull backside guard and the tight end. We're going to take a closer look at this to see if he's got it. Looks Boy, to us. And both chains have moved. He signaled first down, and both chains started to move. Both of them did. So now they have to find the right spot. And hopefully they got that situated. Easily. Yeah. And then you stop them to get the measurement. It looked pretty clear that the first down yardage needed had already been gained. So Jordan Wilkins in the backfield with a minute and a half to play. As the clock runs, Josh Pascal on the inside, number four. They can't just lay their ears back and rush, though. Tamu getting pressure. Throws. Caught. Demarcus Lodge on the sidelines, gets out of bounds, picks up eight. Boy, Pascal almost got to Tamu. The mobility of Tamu, and it's come in handy on a number of occasions, even on this drive, where we've seen his scramble ability able to evade the pressure and get the ball downfield. Tamu, big collision on Brown, holds on to the football, has the first down. Nice grab from number one. Westry came in to hit him. Well, Westry got the worst end of the deal. Westry's going to come out of the game, and Lonnie Johnson is going to substitute in. Westry looked a little shaken up after that shot. Also, Denzel Ware writhing in pain. It's like another cramp. We saw Jordan Jones leave the game earlier this half with the cramp. Now watch this shot. You get the completion to A.J. Brown. Chris Westry, he comes in. He gets the short end of the stick. A.J. Brown, 6'1", 225 pounds. Well, Westry felt all of it on that one. It was enough to get the first down after the contact. And you see Denzel Ware going over to the sideline. We mentioned Josh Paschal. Got a nice pass rush, Denzel Ware and Josh Allen. It's been relatively quiet from Allen as you see Westry getting worked on on the sideline. He's Lonnie saying Johnson. he's good. He's, Westry's like, I'm good. He wants to get back in there and compete. Lonnie Johnson, though, started the game, has gotten the bulk of the snaps, got the bulk of the snaps last game versus Tennessee, even though he didn't get the start. Well, Kentucky. Trying to get out of here with a win to go to 7-2. If they can hold on, it'd be the first time they've been 7-2 since 1984. But they've got some work to do. Nice catch by Dawson Knox. That's a gain of nine. He'll be a yard shy of the line to make. It's a comfort zone for Ole Miss. They stay in, hurry up. You see quickly to the line. Four-man rush out to Wilkins. Trying to get out of bounds, and he does so after he gets a first down. 30 seconds on the clock. 
Nice block that time by Dawson Knox. As you see Wilkins wanting to tap out of this game. You got to keep in mind Wilkins usually the every down back. So you start thinking protection scenarios. We've seen the back out of the backfield hit a number of times on this possession for Ole Miss. Pinneman in the game now running back for the Rebels. They'll throw it out to Pinneman. He's got some blockers, cuts it back. And he'll get it inside the 20, down to around the 17. I think Ole Miss is going to take their final timeout with 21 seconds to play. Man, and there was a lot of jersey out there on the perimeter. And the block in front of Penniman. No flag. And Ole Miss now, of course, picking up more yards and chipping away at this. You see, watch it swing out. Looks like Demarcus Lodge. No, Man. no, no. He had a lot of jersey. There's plenty of jersey there. Of course, as we mentioned, no flag. Penniman able to get upfield. The back out of the backfield. A couple of easy throws. They started the drive off. Trying to hit Wilkins out of the backfield. Incomplete pass. A bad ball from Tamu. Tamu's done a pretty good job. Able to extend plays. More 22 seconds left. Right here on the what? 17-yard line. No timeouts left for Ole Miss. They added one second, so 22 seconds on the clock. Ole Miss has only won one game since September 9th. They have lost five of the last six. Quarterback keeper to Amu. Hit the ground. Fumble. Kentucky has it. It looked like Tamu hit the ground and the ball popped out. Randolph came up with the fumble. We saw the QB draw. We talk about how dangerous it, was, dangerous it is. Edwards came up on the tackle. Ball came out, but we got to take another look at this to see if Tommy was down. It looked to me like his left elbow was down before that ball pops out. He rolled over. Watch his left arm here. That ball still possessed. He still possesses yeah. that football. Yeah, I think he's down. He's down there. Love the call. We talk about it all the time. And we said that's the big difference. We've seen the QB draw. It's coming handy a, a couple of different times. They call it at least four times this game. On this drive, Tamu has extended the plays with his feet. Quarter, running, or receivers rather have done a great job coming back and showing the quarterback their numbers and giving him somewhere to go with the football. We get down here. And on a second down, a light box, everybody's paying attention in coverage, split safeties. You want to make sure that obviously at the end of game, some situation here, you want to make sure you get the clock set correctly. Based on how long this has taken, it's telling me that this is going to be Ole Miss football, and they're just trying to get the clock and the chains and the Yard line yeah. set looks like the seven yard line. With 18 seconds. Looked to me like he would have been established down. With 18 seconds still on the game clock. To pop another five seconds on there. Give Ole Miss a first down. We were talking with defensive coordinator Matt House. You know, what, what's more difficult? You know, a quarterback that scrambles or a quarterback that's just looking to run? He said they're both a pain. But we've seen in this game, Tom would do both. No timeouts for Ole Miss. And 
Here we go. After further review, the ruling is the runner was down before the ball came loose at the seven yard line. It'll be first and goal at the seven. Reset the game clock to 18 seconds. 18 seconds on the game clock. So once they get this ball set, the clock's going to start. No timeouts for Ole Miss. So they better, better be ready to go. Our officials have to get set. Long run for Mark Curls and crew. You see down here at the bottom of your screen, DK Metcalf. That was the name that was mentioned at receiver when we asked, who are you most nervous? In the red zone? That guy can go up and get a ball. No miss will spike it. I, I have no idea why you spike the football right there. You completely, you waste it down to spike a football. Unless you were wanting to see what the defense was going to show you. There's plenty of time to run a play on first down. So now second and goal from the seven. And Kentucky will take a timeout. So Stoops calls timeout because now he knows they're committed. You're not going to burn another timeout. I mean, another play, rather, with another spike. That was bizarre. They but had plenty of that's time. A, Think about what was going on. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't get why you spiked the football right there. As we mentioned, personnel-wise, well, this is a chance. Both of these a defense, if anybody could match up with Ole Miss in the red zone in a jump ball situation, it's this secondary. We've hit it hard. It's worth noting, though, you're talking about an entire receiving core that's north of six feet tall. And you throw Dawson Knox in there as well at 6'4". But they're matched up with the defensive backfield that can go up and get it as well. Now, the runt of the litter is Mike Edwards at six feet tall. Yeah. And the team's leading tackler. So second down and goal. Same matchup at the bottom of your screen. 6'4 versus 6'3. Pressure comes to Amu to the end zone. A.J. Brown was the intended target. Jordan Griffin batted it away at the last moment. And there's 10 seconds remaining, and it's third and goal. You go to your leading receiver and give him a chance. Did a great job getting your hands on it. Jordan Griffin knocking that ball down. And you wonder, they work to the field side, the three receiver side that time. Will they come back to the island that Metcalf is on down here on the 10 yard line now? Tamu lost it up in the air, looking for Metcalf. He made the catch as he inbounds. No signal yet. They gave him the touchdown. Metcalf with an unbelievable catch in the corner of the end zone to give Ole Miss the lead. Even the Ole Miss sideline isn't sure of it. Metcalf working against Lonnie Johnson. You talk about high pointing a ball. He completes the catch. That's a touchdown. What body control by DK Metcalf. 6'4", 230. DK just saw it on the big screen. He knows. 6'4", 230 with hops. Hey, you want a big physical catch? You go to a guy whose dad was an All-American offensive tackle. We're athletes, Dave. DK Metcalf <laughs> is a guy that, as we mentioned, Kentucky was sweating it, you know, from the size and athleticism. You know, that's the matchup you want, though. You've got your biggest DB out on the field and Lonnie Johnson he's got his hand in there that's just that's hand strength that's a touchdown I mean what a grab what a catch with Lonnie Johnson hanging all over him and of course Lonnie Johnson at 6'3 203 matching up size wise with a 6'4 receiver how about Metcalf you know Lonnie Johnson's got his hands he's splitting the receivers hands and Metcalf just goes one hand with it. You know, if he rakes that ball out, obviously incomplete pass, and you're fighting back for it and instead. It's confirmed. Touchdown. Yeah.
What a catch. What a drive. 14 play, 71 yards. Last week, it was Ole Miss that had their hearts broken. As Arkansas connected on a field goal with four seconds left to play. Today, Ole Miss responds with a touchdown with five seconds left to play. And if you're Kentucky, you have an authoritative drive. You go right down the field. Benny Snell does what he does. You get in the end zone, and then Jordan Tamu, in only his second start, he was masterful. Didn't start out very well in that possession. A bad ball, short in the ground. You can't say enough about what number 10 did for Ole Miss. They go right down the field. You see DK Metcalf, nine catches those last two games, 190 yards, and of those two touchdowns, none are more important than the one that he just scored. Gary Wunderlich to make this a three-point game. 37-34. Jordan Tamu, 31 of 43, 82, four touchdowns, but the belt goes to 14. DK Metcalf. He ain't holding it. He's putting it on. He's like, this is mine for the game. Let there be no doubt. The nasty, the nasty wideouts were nasty. That was a nasty catch. Can't say enough about what A.J. Brown did today as well. Made some tough catches over the middle. But Ta'amu with 382 and four touchdowns. Last week, he threw for 368. Metcalf, five catches. Van Jefferson, five catches. Dawson Knox, five catches. A.J. Brown, seven catches. Lodge with five catches. It's about stepping up. That receiving core making it happen. Just saw Sean Rawlings headbutt D.K. Metcalf <laughs> without his helmet. And I think Rawlings was out with a concussion last week. Uh, they're college kids. <laughs> Man, get a trainer over there. <laughs> Quick kick, a couple of bounces. Here comes some laterals. Bowden will try to throw it back. Still looking to throw it. Now the lateral game begins. Bowden again with it. He's backed all the way up. And the forward pass will end the game. What a day for Ole Miss. A team that had lost five of their last six games and a heartbreaker just a week ago. Somehow, somehow found it today on the road against Kentucky to win 37-34. Well, how excited is Matt Luke? Because it's been a long road to hope. He's talked about California, a win that they counted on getting. It didn't work out. There was a drought. They get a victory over Vanderbilt and let one slip away but they fought their way back into this one to get a victory. Let's go down to Dawn. Yeah, here with Coach Luke. You just said you'll take this one. You wondered how your team would respond after last week's loss to Arkansas. What did you learn about your guys? It's just a gutsy, gutsy win. So happy for these guys. Every week they showed up. They've had every reason to quit, and they have. They just kept battling. And I just want – they've been getting better, and I just it's, – it's, it's good that they finally get some return on their investment. Take me through what was going through your head on that last drive and then that last touchdown catch by DK. Just just managing the game and, you know, trying to you – know, you, had, you had two timeouts, but getting down there felt like we had a one-on-one -on -one to DK coming up he just made a great play Jordan Tamu in his second start calm efficient what impressed you the most about him I mean this is the second start uh, you know just impressive he takes us down the field and we score I uh, can't say enough about him coach I'll let you guys celebrate congrats yep. thank you that will be a nice plane ride home for the Rebels and they have endured so much this year before the season even started and one of these wins see where it takes them but for Kentucky this is a heartbreaking defeat. They go to six and three. Stitch, make something out of this. Well, you know, you <laughs> see if Ole Miss can give a little bit of momentum. We said, what kind of season can it be? You got to get back in the win column. A lot to coach from, but certainly exciting. 
to watch a quarterback come in as a backup and find a way to win in the two-minute drill. 37-34 coming up next. It's SEC Now. Let's get you back to Dari in the studio.